In July of the fourth year of Chongzhen, Qing Shiji, who had the ability to travel through the time and space of the late Ming dynasty, came to Dengzhou. He originally intended to use time travel to make some money. However, the trend was like a tide, pushing Qing Shiji step by step towards the turbulent stage. Starting from the left thousand households of Dengzhou Wei. He exterminates bandits, quells rebellion, and protects one side. Collecting Lushuan, restoring Liaonan, and Majestic in all directions. Ku Jianu, Jinmen, expelling the western barbarians, open up land for cultivation, promote industry and commerce, and cultivate land for Xinjiang. Amidst natural and man-made disasters, corrupt governance, and the silence of ten thousand horses, Daiming is the only hope. Song Xianza said, Your Majesty, the country cannot be without a ruler for a day. Cheng Shiji sighed and said, You are trapped in injustice. Li Yendao said, Your Majesty has fallen into one person's injustice, yet he is fortunate to all the people in the world. Book Group 10817558 Keywords of the Novel In the late Ming Dynasty, I really didn't want to be an emperor. No pop ups. In the late Ming Dynasty, I really didn't want to be an emperor. Download the complete text. In the late Ming Dynasty, I really didn't want to be an emperor. Read the latest chapter. Chapter 1 Welcome Collection. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1 Welcome Collection The author is working hard to save the manuscript, and the babies they like will be collected and brought home first. We look forward to the future together. End of this chapter. Chapter 2 Fat Meat is an ID card. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 2 Fat Meat is an ID card. Chapter 001 Fat Meat is an ID card. Old Cheng, this project is quite urgent, you need to work overtime. Old Cheng, someone needs to keep an eye on Han Dong's side. No one else can leave, go ahead. Old Cheng, the final payment from Nan and Company has been delayed for too long. Go and urge. Old Cheng. Old Cheng, in fact, is not old. He has just turned 35 years old. His real name is Cheng Shiji, and he is a middle dot level cadre of the Han Steel Group. It's not that the leaders value him much, but because he is a middle dot aged man who is easy to bully. Cheng Shiji has been working at Han Steel Group for 15 years, working tirelessly and doing the hardest and most tiring work Cheng Shiji's leadership killed him because his life was too stressful. He had two children at home, one son and one daughter. His son, Cheng Jelong, was 11 years old, and his daughter, Cheng Jiayue, was only 4 years old. However, Cheng Jiayue was naturally weak and sickly, and often stayed in the hospital. Cheng Shiji's wife had to resign to take care of her daughter and take care of her children full dot time. The living expenses of his family of four are all borne by Cheng Shiji. Faced with this situation, Cheng Shiji had no better way. His first degree was only a college degree, and he couldn't find a better job even if he wanted to change jobs. He could only endure the pressure. Shiji, do you need to work overtime today? Cheng Shiji received a call from his wife Xiang Hui, and it was only then that he remembered that today was his daughter Cheng Jiayue's fourth birthday. Cheng Shiji stretched lazily and saw that there were no more people in the company. He smiled and said, No need to work overtime. I ordered a cake and will go back right away. Let's have dinner together. Cheng Shiji packed his belongings, turned off his computer, and went to the garage downstairs of the company. He rode his electric bike to the cake room and took the 12-inch cake he had ordered. When he arrived at the deli, Cheng Shiji bought a roasted chicken, a few chicken wings, and a bit of pork head. He also bought a bottle of Erguotu as a luxury. Cheng Shiji's home resides in the family home of Han Steel Group, which was built even older than Cheng Shiji's age and has a history of over 40 years. An old family home, with various infrastructure that can no longer keep up, as long as people with similar conditions have already moved out, this place is almost two-thirds empty. Arriving at the entrance of the unit building, 
the corridor was filled with darkness. He stomped his foot hard, but the voice control lights showed no response. He had to take out his phone and illuminate the hallway. When he arrived at his doorstep, Ching Shiji took out the key. Clattering. The sound of one yuan coins rolling down rang out, and Ching Shiji quickly used his phone to search for the direction in which the coins rolled down if someone else loses a dollar, he will lose it. However, Ching Shiji can buy half a bag of salt, two mantu, or half a sausage for his daughter. Coins rolled down the stairs, and just as Ching Shiji picked them up, he noticed that the door to the room on the second floor was open, with a faint light inside. Ching Shiji's neighbor has been moving away for more than three years, and there is no one in the house and the door has never been locked. Ching Shiji will put the junk he usually finds inside and store a certain amount before selling it. How could there be electricity? The electricity in this room has been cut off for a long time. It shouldn't be some little bear playing with fire inside. Thinking of this, Ching Shiji gently pushed the door open. This is the same layout as Ching Shiji's home, with two bedrooms and one living room. The door opens to the living room, where there is no one or lights on, but there is a beam of light. This light, however, was like a huge white balloon, floating in the air like a substance, neither up nor down. Cheng Shiji was immediately startled when he saw this scene. What the hell? However, the white light drifted towards Cheng Shiji. Cheng Shiji stepped back step by step. The white light becomes even more dazzling, as if it is like the sun, making it impossible to see directly. Ching Shiji quickly closed his eyes. The white light surrounded Ching Shiji, and he groped for the direction of the door. Finally, he grabbed the door handle and forcefully opened it. This is an unfamiliar environment, but it has cooled Ching Shiji's heart. It had already turned into daylight before his eyes, and he appeared on a dirt road. In the distance is a towering city, with light rain still falling in the sky. Pedestrians wearing raincoats are struggling to walk. Although many people want to travel these days, Ching Shiji doesn't want to, even if his life is not easy, because traveling means he has to abandon his wife, son, and daughter. Although his wife was not particularly beautiful, his son was mischievous, and his daughter was sick all over, Ching Shiji knew that without him, his wife, son, and daughter would have had an extremely difficult time. While Ching Shiji was daydreaming, several soldiers dressed in tattered Mandarin duck battle jackets walked towards him with long spears and waist knives. In the eyes of these soldiers and pedestrians, Ching Shiji was not only dressed in strange clothes, but also completely different from Daiming. More importantly, Daiming, who was inviolable from his parents and had a strong physique, seemed very strange. Five soldiers surrounded Ching Shiji. As he reacted and was about to run, an archer in the distance had already pulled up his bow, and the rusty arrowhead was aimed at him. As a middle-dot-aged chubby man, he couldn't even run away from these thin and weak soldiers. Stop! Ching Shiji raised his hands carrying roasted chicken and cake and said, Don't misunderstand, don't misunderstand. At this moment, a soldier clearly smelled the scent of the meat in Ching Shiji's hand. He sniffed it hard and reached out his big black hand, ready to grab Ching Shiji's handbag. You're not going to die. An elderly soldier reached out and stopped the young soldier, whispering in a low voice. The elderly soldiers had a wide range of knowledge, and although Ching Shiji was dressed in strange clothes, he was about five feet and eight inches tall, a whole head taller than other soldiers, and weighed at least 240 pounds. More importantly, Ching Shiji's hands were neither calluses nor rough, clearly devoid of any skilled workers. Although Ching Shiji's clothes are strange, their texture is cotton. High-quality pine brocade cotton fabric requires 100 tails of silver per piece, while silk requires 6 tails of silver. His clothes are worth the combined wealth of the five of them. And there are boots, actually sports shoes, which are not something that ordinary people can wear. The old soldier looked at Cheng Shiji's plump body, which was a clear characteristic of a wealthy family. 
In recent years, due to natural and man-made disasters, most small and medium-sized landlords are as thin as monkeys. Moreover, the skin on Qing Shiji's body is even more delicate than that of a woman, and unlike the Western barbarians, who also have fair skin. Although the skin of those Western barbarians may look white from a distance, they are exceptionally rough. They are not like the noble person in front of them. They may just be religious laymen. It's not easy to make a living, there's no need to offend people casually. The old soldier smiled and said, Do you have a guide? As several soldiers muttered, Ching Shiji actually realized that he had to survive in order to slowly find his way back home. If he died, Xiang Hui would definitely remarry, and his daughter and son would call him another man's father, just like what was said in the joke. Sleep with your daughter. In law, spank your child, and spend the money you earn. Ching Shiji has also read many travel novels and similar movies and TV dramas, and understands the truth that humans are good at being bullied and horses are good at being ridden. The more afraid they are, the more they feel like they are being bullied. Ching Shiji can also be considered an old state owned enterprise official. He has the ability to talk to people and ghosts. His eyes narrowed slightly and he said, What are you talking about? A guide. The old soldier smiled all over his face and said, Are you going to visit friends in the city? Cheng Shiji nodded slightly and said, That's right. Sir, please come inside. The old soldier led Cheng Shiji towards the city gate. At a slightly closer distance, Cheng Shiji could clearly see the large characters engraved on the city gate tower. Dengzhou City. Several soldiers followed Ching Shiji, who slowly walked into the city gate. When he passed the city gate cave, Ching Shiji took out the roasted chicken from his handbag and threw it directly to the old soldier, saying, I'll reward you. The old soldier was quite agile, and took the roasted chicken with one hand. His face was full of joy and he said, Thank you for your reward. Several other soldiers also bowed along. The commercial atmosphere of Dengzhou City is very strong. On both sides of the bluestone streets, there are various signs hanging, including restaurants, brothels, pharmacies, hospitals, gold and silver shops, pawn shops, tea shops, warehouses, inns, and so on. At a glance, there is no end in sight. However, there were few pedestrians on the street, and Ching Shiji, dressed in strange clothes, caught everyone's attention. At this moment, Ching Shiji also felt a headache. What should I do? Because of Ching Shiji's fat, no one dares to come up and make things difficult for him. Before crossing over, Ching Shiji also thought about what would happen if I traveled back to ancient times. He has no ambition in his heart, such as going back to ancient times to become an emperor, a wealthy man, or a literary magnate but when he truly traveled, he felt a bit confused. Due to the rain, Ching Shiji's clothes slowly got wet. It wasn't too cold, but the key was that it didn't feel good sticking to him. There are many shops open on the street, but the problem is that money is a hero's courage. Without money, Ching Shiji really dares not go in. After walking aimlessly for a full half hour, I unknowingly arrived at the door of a house, which was tightly closed but very dry. Ching Shiji didn't think much either. He walked over and leaned against the threshold, thinking about countermeasures. He didn't understand what the journey was all about, nor did he know how to get back sitting alone for a while, feeling a bit hungry, Ching Shiji took out the chicken wings he had purchased and thought for a moment, leaving them for his daughter to eat. Her daughter loves to eat chicken wings the most. Ching Shiji was eating pork head meat, which was not rich in lean meat and fat. Just then, a figure appeared next to him. This is a man in his twenties and thirties, wearing a short shirt, which is also tattered. He looked at the fat pig head in front of Cheng Shiji and struggled to swallow his saliva. I want to eat. Mmm. Cheng Shiji now knew nothing except that he had arrived in Dengzhou City, which is later known as Yentai. He handed the pork head in his hand to the man in front of him. Brother. What is your surname and name? Ching Shiji asked about the way ancient people communicated. 
My name is Lu San. Lu San, what year and month is this year? More than half a pound of pig head meat was swallowed by Lu San in a few bites, and he even licked the chili oil on the fast food box clean. Uh, on the third day of July in the fourth year of Chongzhen. Ching Shiji's heart pounded for a moment, as if he was in an ice cellar. In July of the fourth year of Chongzhen, this was a chaotic era where human life was as cheap as grass. Ching Shiji's head was as big as a fight at this moment, and Lu San remained silent as he looked at him. Ching Shiji took out the boiled peanuts he had purchased and silently opened a bottle of air guatu. Before Ching Shiji could take a sip, he suddenly noticed that the door behind him had opened. A middle dot aged man in a blue long shirt walked out, his gaze fixed directly on the ergotu in Ching Shiji's hand. Good wine, delicious wine. The middle dot aged man behind the door startled Ching Shiji. Ching Shiji stood up and sat at the door, somewhat embarrassed. The middle dot aged man looked at the ergotu in Ching Shiji's hand and said, What kind of wine is this? It's so crystal clear. It's still in a crystal bottle. Is it a newly produced fine wine in the capital? The middle dot aged man was also an impatient person, grabbing the wine from Ching Shiji and saying, This wine is for sale. Sell. Give me the money. A young man appeared behind the middle dot aged man, holding a large string of at least a few hundred coins and handing it to Ching Shiji. Ching Shiji also didn't know how the prices of goods in the Ming dynasty were. He looked at the eager appearance of the middle dot aged man and should be able to order more. The middle dot aged man hesitated slightly and said, Not enough. Ching Shiji weighed the copper coins and said, Not enough. Speaking, Ching Shiji pretended to take the ergoto from the middle dot aged man's hand. The middle dot aged man reached into his arms, took out a golden bean, and threw it directly to Ching Shiji. Ching Shiji pinched the golden bean, but it turned out to be solid. That's too much. I'll give you more rewards. Ching Shiji took the money, carried the cake, and prepared to find an inn to stay. He found an inn with a decent environment. Please come inside, sir. Would you like to have a meal or stay at the hotel? Check in. The guy also has a keen eye and said directly, 80 yuan for the upper room and 50 yuan for the middle room. Now Ching Shiji is also a wealthy person. He has at least 5 to 600 coins in his hands, without counting them in detail. He has about 1 or 2 gold beans, but he is not sure how much they are. The upper room is roughly equivalent to a mid-sized suite in later times, with a living room on the outside and a large bed on the inside, as well as furniture such as a desk and cabinets. Ching Shiji lay in bed, unable to sleep. When he closed his eyes, he would think of his wife, son, daughter Ching Shiji felt something was wrong. He opened his eyes and was actually in the room on the second floor. However, the problem was that there was no more roasted chicken, pork head meat, or ergotu, but there was an extra string of copper coins and a golden bean in front of him. What's going on? Cheng Shiji is overjoyed, I'm back again. I'm back. P.S. New Pit, welcome to the pit. Please support us all. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 Two Heavens with Closed Eyes and Open Eyes You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Two Heavens with Closed Eyes and Open Eyes Chapter 002 Ching Shiji looked at the golden beans and the string of copper coins in his hand, which meant that he was not dreaming. The key question is, what exactly is time travel? Without much thought, his phone rang. Caller ID. Wife. Ching Shiji picked up a cake box and a string of copper coins while answering the phone and going upstairs, saying, Hey, I'm back. I worked overtime again yesterday. MMM. They just bully people and don't pay overtime pay even if they work overtime. Ching Shiji opened the door and entered the house. At this moment, my daughter was still soundly asleep in the room, holding a picture in her hand. It was a watercolor brush painting with a Picasso style that most people couldn't appreciate. 
It took Ching Shiji a long time to see that his daughter was painting their family of four. Especially Ching Shiji, who represents his father, is like a ball, while his mother draws a line. However, the problem is that although Ching Shiji is fat, he hasn't become a ball, and although Xiang Hui is thin, he hasn't become lightning. Dad. Ching Jiayue opened her eyes and looked delighted. Ching Shiji looked at his daughter with some guilt and said, I'm sorry, Dad worked overtime yesterday. Dad earns money. Buy new clothes. My daughter's world is very simple, even though she is only four years old, she knows beauty. Fragrant. No, brush your teeth. Ching Shiji placed the cake on the dining table. The paint on the table, which had been in use for 13 years, was already mottled and unsightly. Fortunately, it was made of solid wood and the quality was still excellent. Xiang Hui started making breakfast in the kitchen, cooking while whispering, I failed the Jialong exam again. Ah, this is all fate. Cheng Shiji himself has never been admitted to university. He only attended a junior college and has not considered how to demand that his son must be admitted to university. Although it is said that diligence can make up for awkwardness, the problem is that without that talent, even if one is diligent and remarkable, they can only get three books, one, two, and key books. Without talent, they really won't succeed. Xiang Hui felt a little displeased and said, just get used to it. What will happen in the future? I'm not used to it. Do you want me to learn from Lao Qian and force Jiao Long to death? Old Qian used to be a neighbor of Cheng Shiji, living right across the street. Later, after resigning, he got better and better, gradually gaining money. He enrolled his daughter in various piano, dance, and calligraphy classes, all of which were crowded. His 12.year.old daughter was forced into depression. A year ago, old Qian's daughter jumped off the sixth floor of the commercial city while adults were not paying attention, and her child disappeared on the spot. Old Qian's daughter wrote a very long suicide letter to old Qian, claiming that she was not suitable for school and should not let old Qian spend money in vain. It was better to practice a small account. Speaking of Lao Qian's matter, Xiang Hui fell silent for a moment and said, even if you don't get into college, you still have to graduate from high school. Now, even a college degree is not considered a degree. In the future, what will happen when Jialong grows up? Poor couples mourn for many things, to put it simply, they have no money. Cheng Shiji knew that Xiang Hui wanted to enroll his son in more tutoring classes, so that even if he couldn't get into college in the future, he could at least work with him. The problem is, Cheng Shiji is thinking about his daughter's illness. Her illness is congenital heart disease, and the best solution is a heart transplant. This is a disease of wealth and status. Rich people can treat it, while those without money can only wait to die. Cheng Shiji doesn't have much income and has saved up some money. He wants to treat his daughter's illness. If he encounters a kind-hearted person, what can he do to solve his heart problem? The surgical cost is an astronomical figure for him. After breakfast, as usual, Ching Shiji should continue to work, but thinking about that golden bean. Ching Shiji decided to take a leave. Ching Shiji's leadership is very familiar with his situation. Once Ching Shiji takes a leave, it must be due to his daughter's issues. As long as he speaks up, the leadership will approve the leave. Of course, due to overtime not being paid, taking a leave for one or two days will not result in any deductions. When he left temporarily, Ching Shiji remembered the string of copper coins. He suddenly remembered that copper coins seemed to be more valuable at this time. Ching Shiji returned to the empty room on the second floor, where there was no more light left. Other cardboard boxes or beverage bottles were still there. At this moment, Ching Shiji carefully examined these copper coins, some of which were already rusty. After a rough examination, a total of 561 copper coins were found in nine different specifications, including those from various periods such as Changtai, Tianqi, Chongzhen, Wanli, and Jiajing. Ching Shiji is not aware of the value of these copper coins, 
but he knows that there is a retired director at Han Steel Group who likes to play with copper coins. Although I don't know the other person's contact information or where they live. Chinese society has a network structure, and the relationships between people are also very strange. People I don't know, those I know, can be connected as long as I reach out to those I know. It's not too difficult to inquire about this matter. He made more than a dozen phone calls, went around and found the other person's phone number. The retired director's surname is Zheng, but he is only a deputy director and did not become a full dot-time employee until retirement. Director Zhang's family is wealthy and likes to follow the crowd. In the antique industry, there is depth and authenticity. He also paid several million yuan in tuition fees and gradually became an expert in this field. The first time I met Director Zhang, he was a very kind little old man with good spirits. Of course, his living environment was even better, in the villa area of the Hanlin Mansion. Hanlin Mingdi is the most expensive residential area in Hanhai City where Qing Shiji is located, especially in the villa area. It is said that any villa is worth over 3 million yuan. Director Zhang's nanny led Qing Shiji to the villa. Director Zhang. Xiao Cheng is here. Director Zhang, please take a look. I want to see what's good. Qing Shiji gently placed a string of copper coins on the coffee table in the living room. Director Zhang looked surprised and said, So many. How about it? Is it fake money? Qing Shiji pretended to be nervous and said. Director Zhang picked up a professional magnifying glass and looked solemnly. For a long time, Zheng Chuchang sighed and said, The money is real and well preserved, but it's a pity. Most of these money are worthless Wanli Tongbao, a few yuan each. Director Zheng put together more than ten valuable copper coins and pointed to one of them, saying, The Longqin Tongbao Xiaoping coin has rust or sticky lettering, and the price should be over three thousand yuan. The standard Longqin Tongbao Xiaoping coin has a price of over five thousand yuan, while the better quality version has no circulation on the coin. Cheng Shiji appeared calm on the surface, but inside he was ecstatic. In the end, Cheng Shiji's copper coins totaled three Longqin Tongbao Xiaoping coins, worth 15,000 yuan, including one mother coin, worth 22,000 yuan. Combined in a mess, they amounted to over 37,900 yuan. Director Zheng was also impressive, and surprisingly made up the difference by transferring 38,000 yuan to Qing Shiji. Xiao Cheng, if you have any copper coins in the future, remember to keep looking. Director Zheng, I'm sorry, this is just a coincidence. Otherwise, these copper coins wouldn't have fallen into my hands. However, when encountering such a good thing again, I'll be the first to contact Director Zheng. Easy to say, easy to say, Xiao Cheng. Stay and have a meal. Next time, next time. Qing Shiji is also lamenting that he still hasn't figured out why he traveled to Dengzhou and how he came back. But with this 38,000 yuan, for Qing Shiji, it is a huge sum of money and also a guarantee for his daughter to live in this world. Just as Qing Shiji was enjoying himself, his phone rang. Shiji, we have an extra 38,000 yuan in our account. Could it be someone else transferring it wrong? Xian Hui is a timid woman, and she has heard of the tricks of the bank. She is not afraid of 10,000 yuan, just afraid of the unexpected. She inexplicably has an extra amount of money in her account, which may not be a good thing. It could be telecom fraud or fairy jumping. Qing Shiji smiled faintly and said, Wife, don't be nervous. This money is my extra income. I thought it would take a while, but I didn't expect them to give it so quickly. Can you enroll Jialong in a tutoring class? Cheng Shiji didn't ask how much money the tutoring class would cost. Money is courage, so he directly replied, report it. Okay, hanging up the phone, Cheng Shiji thought of a question. They only had Cheng Shiji earning money at home, and his bank card, which was his salary card, was in Xiang Hui's hands. She also knew the password. If the copper coins are real, then the golden beans should also be real. 
it's not like these copper coins are even more valuable. If there is an extra amount of money in the card today, Xiang Hui may be scared to death. Thinking of this, Cheng Shiji decided to quietly apply for a bank card himself first. It's not that Cheng Shiji doesn't trust his wife Xiang Hui, the key issue is that he's afraid of scaring her. Having processed his bank card, it was already around 4 p.m. and he brought the golden bean directly to a certain Dafu Gold jewelry store in Hanhai City. The storefront of a certain Dafu Gold store is very large, about 3 to 4 thousand square meters, with a dazzling array. Normally, Ching Shiji wouldn't come here because he doesn't have money. But now that he has some money, he has more courage. Ching Shiji walked very calmly into a large fortune shop. When it comes to Cheng Shiji's attire, it's not too bad. Han Steel Group is a leading enterprise in Hanhai City, and the company's welfare is quite good. Almost every year, clothes are distributed, including suits, down jackets, jackets, casual wear, shirts, and besides autumn clothes, underwear, and warm clothes, Cheng Shiji has been working for 15 years and the clothes he buys are few and far between. The quality and brand of the clothes distributed by Han Hai Group are actually quite good, with suits costing around 2,000 yuan and casual wear costing around 1,000 yuan. People rely on their clothes and horses rely on their saddles. With Cheng Shiji's attire, even entering and exiting five-dot-star hotels is not considered shabby. Of course, he also enters and exits such places due to work needs. Boss, may I ask what you want to buy? Gold is currently on sale, would you like to? Before the waiter could finish speaking, Ching Shiji took out the golden bean and said, Do you accept gold here? Collect. The waiter took Ching Shiji to the second dot hand gold service desk. Ching Shiji handed the golden bean to the appraiser. The appraiser weighed the golden beans on an electronic scale, and the golden beans were not actually considered heavy totaling 37.125 grams. After instrument analysis, the appraiser looked at Ching Shiji and said, Boss, it seems that your golden bean has been melted. Ching Shiji nodded slightly and said, Yes. You have been tricked by someone else, and your weight may be the same as before, but it is not a thousand gold anymore. Now it is only 9.2.57%, with copper as the other component. 5.7%, and. Cheng Shiji pondered whether it might be a problem with the metallurgical technology of the Ming dynasty, and asked, how much can it be sold for? Second-hand gold is sold at the international gold price. Yesterday, it could still be sold for 365 yuan, but today it can only be sold for 362 yuan. Your gold needs to be stripped of 0.77% impurities. The appraiser took out a calculator and calculated, a total of 12,431.30 yuan, do you need to sell it? Sell. Cash or transfer? Transfer. The text message is coming. Your savings card with ending number 0488 received 12,431 renminbi and 30 cents on August 11th at 17.5, with a current balance of 12,441 renminbi and 30 cents. Ching Shiji walked out of a certain great fortune, feeling a sigh of relief. It's just a pity, there's only one chance to earn over 50,000 yuan a day like this. It would have been great if I had bought more Urguotu at that time. People are like this, greedy Ching Shiji looked at his phone and saw that it was already 5.30 p.m. He remembered that he had not sold gifts to his daughter for a long time. Last time, Ching Jiayue saw a shiny crystal music box in the supermarket and wanted it very much. However, Ching Jiayue was very sensible and knew that there was no money at home to buy toys for her. This little angel whenever he thinks of this, Ching Shuring feels uneasy in his heart. The earlier his daughter undergoes surgery, the better, but the cost of the surgery is astronomical. Perhaps, I don't know when I will leave him. If I can live for a day, I will make her happy for a day. Cheng Shiji rode his electric bike and turned into the Jinjia commercial city, arriving at the jewelry area on the fourth floor. 
Cheng Shiji stared at the crystal music box and asked, How much is it? 129.99 yuan. The waiter noticed that Cheng Shiji seemed hesitant and pointed to another smaller crystal music box, saying, This one is cheap, it only costs 69.99 yuan. Take this big one. Cheng Shiji is also aware that over a hundred yuan may be blamed by Xiang Hui, but he doesn't want to regret it. I bought the crystal music box for my daughter and a complete set of study questions and drawing boards for my son Ching Jialong in the stationary area. Although Ching Jialong's academic performance is not good, he has a great love for art, especially in sketching. Ching Shiji believes that his son's level is not inferior to those who sell paintings on the street. After buying a drawing board and paper, Ching Shiji walked to the cosmetics area on the first floor. He remembered that since his daughter came to this world, it seemed that Xiang Hui had never bought any cosmetics, and every day she was barefaced. I vaguely remember that when Xiang Hui was young, she was also a famous beauty from all over the country. If it weren't for being a formal worker at Han Steel Group, she might not have been able to win Xiang Hui's favor. Sir, take a look at this small sample set. For the promotion now, it only costs 99 yuan. This is a big brand. Ba Cheng Shiji carried these things and returned to his own community. He didn't call Xiang Hui, although he spent more than 400 yuan in one night, I'm afraid he will be blamed by Xiang Hui. Despite being an old husband and wife, marriage also requires occasional small surprises. When he reached the second floor, Cheng Shiji instinctively looked at the empty room on the second floor, and the door was still unlocked. He involuntarily opened the door to the room. Unfortunately, there was no light inside. With some regrets and some disappointment, Ching Shiji walked towards the door. At this moment, a sudden burst of light appeared in the living room. The flying light once again became even more dazzling. Ching Shiji instinctively closed his eyes and then slowly opened them. He appeared in the upper room of the inn called Lu Ji in Dengzhou. No accidents, it's daytime there. End of this chapter. Chapter 4 Tears are the most critical. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 4 Tears are the most critical. Chapter 003 I was careless. Entering the time and space of the late Ming dynasty, Qing Shiji was not happy, but rather slightly unhappy because he was not well prepared. This was an uncontrollable journey and this time he came over without carrying anything that could be easily monetized, not even buying a dagger. In the late Ming dynasty, this was not a later era, but a chaotic one where one's life was as cheap as grass. Although he also has some knowledge of history and general historical events during the late Ming dynasty, the problem is that after graduating fifteen years, his little knowledge of history has already been returned to his teacher. Cheng Shiji regretted it a bit. If he had known, he would have checked Baidu to find out what major events happened in the fourth year of Chongzhen. He vaguely remembered a very famous rebellion that occurred in Dengzhou. Cheng Shiji vaguely remembered that the Dongjiang army had turned Dengzhou city and Shandong into a wasteland, with countless casualties Cheng Shiji actually had no impression of the specific time. Pop! Cheng Shiji patted his head and forced himself to quickly calm down. As a member of the Crossing Army, what should we do now? Although Cheng Shuring may not be considered a weak and weak scholar, if it were ten years ago, his physical fitness was still good because at that time, he graduated from a metallurgical engineering college and was working as a technician at the fifth branch of the Han Steel Group on the front line. He could carry a heavy oxygen cylinder weighing over 80 pounds and walk climbing high and stepping low without any problem. But the problem is that he has been working in a government agency for over eight years, gaining over a hundred pounds, but his physical fitness has seriously declined. He is just a superficial middle-aged fat man. It is not an exaggeration to say that any two adult men can take care of him. If you have money, you can hire a few guards thinking of this, Ching Shiji suddenly had an idea. The first step is to have money. Now he quickly counts his own things, a set of samples of light fragrance perfume of a second-tier luxury brand, 
which was certainly valuable in the late Ming dynasty, but he has no sales platform and no access. Secondly, Cheng Shiji was not clear about the value of the drawing boards, paper, and pencil sets he bought for his son in the late Ming dynasty. Similarly, he did not have any sales channels once again, I bought a crystal music box for my daughter. This item can sell for tens of tails of silver, so it shouldn't be a problem. The middle-aged man who bought wine last time even thought it was crystal, and he was generous in his actions. He should be a qualified buyer. Thinking of this, Ching Shiji had an idea. Ching Shiji will open the crystal music box, which is packaged in a slightly high.end plastic box. After taking out the production date and location information on it, he is ready to find a buyer. He had to spend another night at this Lu Ji Inn, but he didn't have the money to pay for the room. Soon, Ching Shiji had a solution. Hey buddy. What instructions do you have, sir? Cheng Shiji pointed to his belongings and said, I'm going out to visit friends. If these things are left here, will there be any problems? Cheng Shiji wanted to use the method of not having 300 tails of silver here to tell his staff that he would come back, and these treasures were very valuable. The waiter immediately smiled and said, Don't worry, my guest. There will definitely be no theft of property in our Lu Ji. In case of theft, you can smash Lu Ji's sign. What's the use of smashing your sign? These things are meant to be given to benefactors. The guy smiled and was about to explain. An elderly voice came from outside. In case of theft, Lu Ji will repay ten times. Are you the final say? I am Lu Ji's shopkeeper, so I naturally keep my word. Cheng Shiji stood up and picked up the crystal music box, saying, that's the best. These things are not worth much money, and the most important thing is this. Cheng Shiji opened the perfume gift box, pointed to four bottles of perfume and said, this is a good thing bought in the West, comparable to gold. The shopkeeper looked at the crystal bottle and knew that it was worth a lot. He believed that Cheng Shiji was not the scammer who wanted to deceive Lu Ji. After all, the scammer was starving and couldn't eat Cheng Shiji's physique. The owner of Lu Ji owns more than ten shops, including warehouses, inns, and gold and silver shops. Just this Lu Ji in alone can earn more than 500 tails of silver a year. However, their owner is not a big fish and meat every day, let alone a greasy face like Ching Shiji. Please rest assured, my guest. Lu Ji has been driving for over 200 years and will definitely not smash his own signboard for a few tens of tails of silver. See you later. Cheng Shiji stood up and left without tidying up. The shopkeeper looked at the waiter and said, send two people over and keep an eye on this place. Don't approach strangers. I understand. Cheng Shiji left Lu Ji in and walked straight towards the alley where he had taken shelter from the rain the day before yesterday. After walking for over half an hour, Cheng Shiji felt as if he had arrived at the alley. Sadly, he realized that he seemed to be lost. Cheng Shiji is also pondering that the middle dot aged man who bought his Erguota that day should be a good drinker. He would not hesitate to spend a gold bean to buy his Erguota but he may not necessarily buy his crystal music box. Another aimless deception, almost like wandering through a maze, finally stopped in front of a house. Cheng Shiji looked at the house, which hung a blue gilded plaque with the words, Left House, written on it. Although Cheng Shiji is not a historian, he generally knows that ancient times are different from later generations. In later generations, as long as they have money, they can buy an island and build a manor without any problems. However, in the Ming dynasty, there were strict restrictions on etiquette and laws. Ordinary families were called houses, while noble families were called mansions. There were gatehouses and household pairs in front of this house, indicating that the other party was definitely an official family. Seeing this, Ching Shiji turned around and left. No one in the government has a good thing. When they see the crystal music box in their hands, there is a great chance that they will not buy it, but will snatch it. 
The ancient government did not talk to you about human rights and legal systems, and even if they catch you and throw you into prison without blinking an eye. You don't have a place to complain yet. Cheng Shiji looked at the pawn shop across the street and wondered if he could pawn this crystal music box for some money first, and at least settle the rent of Lu Ji in. In addition, he needed to eat something. He hasn't eaten for at least six or seven hours since noon, and his stomach has been starving for a long time. Although Cheng Shiji is fat, he is the least willing to bear hunger. The storefront of the pawn shop is quite large, which can be considered as five rooms. There are two short-sleeved assistants standing at the door, who look like Kong Wuli is powerful. The guy looked at Ching Shiji and said, Monk Thina, you're going somewhere else to disguise yourself. I'm not a monk. In fact, the monks of the Ming dynasty were far from being like those in movies and TV dramas, with shiny heads. Most monks actually had some hair, just slightly shorter than Ching Shiji's. Ching Shiji originally wanted to fabricate a lie to explain his hair, but as he looked at the waiter who was not interested, he walked straight to the store. Sir, please come inside. The one inside was wearing tortoise shell glasses and looked at Ching Shiji, saying, What is it? In fact, there are only three positions in a pawn shop. The external vacancy is responsible for receiving personnel and valuing the pawn, which is also known as reporting and singing in the industry. The middle vacancy is responsible for writing the pawn ticket. When the external vacancy is caused by the reporting and singing of the Yin Yang Monster Air Pressure Price, the middle vacancy immediately writes it. Cheng Shiji handed over the crystal music box. Everyone in the pawn shop is a human spirit. Looking at Cheng Shiji's clothes and his fat body, one knows that this person should have good financial resources. If you look at this person who is wealthy and dignified, it is estimated that he may be able to redeem this item in time, so that his singing will be higher, which can also increase the interest rate and earn interest money. If you look at this person who has no money, is dressed in rags, and appears to be selling things to make a living, then singing will be suppressed very low, earning a buy low, sell high money. Like by Jingqi going to a pawn shop and pawning at the gate of a mansion. When he took out a brand new leather jacket, the clerk said in a strange tone, Worms eat mice, bare boards have no fur, a tattered face and a tattered jacket. This is actually intentionally lowering the price. Cheng Shiji's face was slick with oil, but he didn't look listless. Although his clothes were strange, they were made of cotton fabric, so he should be a wealthy person. My guest, are you prepared to pretend to be dead or alive? Live it. Cheng Shiji has also understood the tricks of this industry. If he dares to pawn, the other party will definitely smash the price. If he chooses to live pawn, it can actually be higher. The more money he pawns, the higher the interest he can earn. How much silver do you want to pawn, sir? At least a thousand tails. It's too high, just crystal, it's not worth so much. Isn't it worth it? Cheng Shiji reached out and pressed the electronic switch of the crystal music box, only to see the originally ordinary crystal box suddenly emit a light purple light, and a pleasant sound of the electronic piano came from inside. This. A thousand tails of silver, is it still high? Zhong Kei hurriedly went to find the shopkeeper. Not long after, an old shopkeeper over fifty years old walked over and looked at Ching Shiji, asking, how long do you want to pawn it, sir? A month. Ching Shiji said, you can't sell it within a month, otherwise. Humph. It's easy to say, easy to say. At the sign of the shopkeeper, Zhong Kei began to draft the bill. The shopkeeper said, good to let the guest know. Our Xingping account is fair to both the old and the young. One month later, you can come and collect it with your ticket, with a monthly interest of one cent. Black, really black. One cent of profit per month means that Ching Shiji has become a pawn of one thousand tails of silver, and one month later, he still needs eleven hundred tails. Ching Shiji said with a painful expression, Okay. Sign by hand. Do you need a silver bill or cash? Is there any gold? 
A thousand tails of silver is over sixty-two pounds. Although Ching Shiji can carry it on his back, it is definitely very inconvenient. Yes, the exchange rate for gold and silver is one to eight. One thousand tails of silver can be exchanged for 120.5 tails of gold. 120.5 tails of silver, weighing only over seven pounds, is easy to carry. Cheng Shiji exchanged 124 tails of gold and 8 tails of scattered silver. After the delivery was completed, Cheng Shiji returned directly to Lu Ji in carrying the gold. Shortly after leaving the Xingping pawn shop, Cheng Shiji gained a few more tails. Although he was a bit nervous, he walked slowly towards Lu Ji in. Fortunately, there were no dangers along the way, which allowed Cheng Shiji to return to Lu Ji. Sir, please come inside. Do you have any food? Yes, Lu Ji has everything from flying in the sky to running on the ground and swimming in the water. Having money in hand, not panicking in the heart. How many dishes are your signature dishes from Lu Ji? Sir, please wait a moment. Not long after, the waiter came over with the dishes and began to announce the dish name. Stir fried lamb tripe with scallions. Hanlong Kai. Three things. It is necessary to note here that it is made by mixing three ingredients, namely, sea chicken and pig tendon, and simmering slowly over low heat. It can also be said that it is the ancestor of Buddha jumps over the wall. A large table was filled with dishes, and although Ching Shiji had a large appetite, he only ate less than one dot third. Just as he was preparing to pay the bill, a shout came from the door of the shop. Ching Shiji followed the sound and saw more than ten men in short shirts beating around a man. The man who was beaten didn't fight back, he just protected his head with both hands. Ching Shiji frowned slightly. The assistant of Lu Ji is also someone who is good at observing words and expressions. Seeing Ching Shiji unhappy, he quickly ran out of the shop and cursed at a dozen or so big men who were beating people, saying, Wang Er, get out of here. You have disturbed the nobleman. You can't afford it. Cheng Shiji suddenly saw the beaten man with a somewhat familiar face, as if he had met Lu San once. Wait, you go ask what's going on. My guest, do you have that mischievous acquaintance? That's right. Cheng Shiji saw that his accomplice still had some deterrent power over Wang Er. It should be due to Lu Ji's strong influence that Wang Er couldn't afford to provoke him, so he took out a piece of broken silver from his pocket. Ching Shiji didn't have the intention of accepting Lu San's orders for him, after all, Ching Shiji really didn't want to live in the late Ming dynasty. He had to go back, and this 120.4 tails of gold was just over one million. I have the money to treat my daughter's illness, so I can go and treat her. He really dares not hang out in the late Ming dynasty. What if he dies? Bring Lu San over, this is a reward for you. Big joy, buddy. Not long after, Lu San, covered in scars, walked into the store. Lu San knelt down to Cheng Shiji and said, Thank you, Duke En. Get up, Cheng Shiji asked, What's going on? Lu San murmured, My mother is hungry, I didn't get any money. Cheng Shiji pointed at the waiter and said, Pack these leftovers and bring them back to your mother to eat. Lu Sanxian's Grateful Departure Cheng Shiji paid Lu Ji half a month's rent in advance, and with meals, he spent a total of eight silver coins, less than one or two, which means that the purchasing power of the silver is still quite good. This meal will be worth a few thousand yuan in future generations. Wait and endure slowly until it gets dark. Ching Shuring quickly lay in bed, with his eyes open and closed, or in the room. Ching Shiji suddenly became anxious and couldn't go back. What's going on? Ching Shiji is a bit anxious. His brain began to run rapidly, thinking about the details before and after crossing. The first time I saw white light, it was dazzling, and then I traveled through the second time, close your eyes and then go back. Common ground Cheng Shiji thought of it. The first time he saw the dazzling white light, he instinctively closed his eyes, 
and his eyes were stimulated, shedding tears. The second time he went back, he thought he couldn't go back, shedding tears. Can we say that tears are the key element of time travel? Give it a try. Ching Shiji began to brew emotions, thinking of not being able to see his wife or son. Tears began to flow, and a sudden burst of white light appeared, closing his eyes. Ching Shiji opened his eyes and looked around. Sure enough, he appeared in the empty room on the second floor. End of this chapter Chapter 5 The city of Dengzhou is filled with murderous intent. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 The city of Dengzhou is filled with murderous intent Chapter 004 Having successfully mastered the key to time travel, Qing Shiji couldn't wait to try how to make money from the end of the Ming Dynasty. However, before he could take action, he received a call from his wife Xiang Hui. Hello, why can't you get through with your phone? What's wrong? Jia Yue is feeling a bit uncomfortable, I brought her to the hospital. Where is it? Han Steel Group Employees General Hospital. Wait for me, I'll be there soon. Cheng Shiji didn't care about exchanging gold for cash. When he returned home, he exchanged 124 tails of gold, which was actually not very big. There were two 50 tails of gold bars, two 10 tails of gold bars, and four beans. It's less than four kilograms. Cheng Shiji placed the gold under the bed at home, found a pair of leather boots that he didn't usually wear, put the gold in his boots, and then rode an electric bike to the workers' general hospital of Han Steel Group. Unlike other places, generally speaking, the best medical facilities and most advanced technology in a city should be the local First People's Hospital. However, the problem is that in Hanhai City, the best hospital is Han Steel Group. Han Steel Group is a super large state owned enterprise under the jurisdiction of the State Owned Asset Supervision and Administration Commission. Its enterprise level is vice provincial, and it is a heavy industrial group with nearly 400,000 employees. Its subordinate employee general hospital ranks among the top three in comprehensive strength in Hadong province. Arriving at the outpatient building of Hanhai Group General Hospital, Ching Shiji followed the information sent to Hui and went directly to the cardiology department on the 12th floor of Building 7. Finally finding Xiang Hui, Ching Shiji couldn't wait to ask, how is Jia Yue doing now? Check now. Xiang Hui's eyes turned slightly red and she said, after 4 o'clock in the afternoon, she started screaming and feeling uncomfortable. I quickly called you, but couldn't get through, so I took her to the hospital. Cheng Shiji was very anxious, but he didn't show it because he knew that he was also in chaos, and Xiang Hui would be even more panicked, which might scare her to death. Not long after, Cheng Jiayue was pushed out of the intensive care unit. At this moment, Cheng Jiayue's mental state was still good. She reached out her little hand and said, Mom, Dad, I'm hungry. Xiang Hui was very excited and said, Mom will buy it for you. Cheng Shiji walked up to the doctor. The doctor is also an old acquaintance of Cheng Shiji. Since Cheng Jiayue was born, he has come to the hospital countless times. Whether it is the chief physician or the nurse, he has known each other. Before Cheng Shiji could speak, Dr. Han sighed and said, Old Cheng, the situation is not very good. You need to prepare early. Housing prices are currently in a slump. In Dr. Han's view, the only way for Ching Shiji to treat his daughter's illness was to sell the house. However, the problem was that in the old residential area where Ching Shiji lived, the house had no price at all, only less than half of the market price, about six or seven thousand yuan per square meter. So, is there a heart source now? I'm not quite sure about this, let's make an appointment first and prepare the money. Ching Shiji has also consulted that the cost of heart transplant surgery is about 1 million yuan or more, which is not the most crucial. The most crucial thing is that anti-rejection drugs should be used for a long time after surgery, which is the deadly big money. Not to mention 180,000 yuan, it is 1 million yuan, and 2 million yuan may not necessarily solve the problem. 
So the congenital heart disease, also known as wealth disease, is difficult for ordinary people, even the real middle class, to afford such high treatment costs. When Ching Shiji arrived at the hospital room, Xiang Hui made a silent gesture to Ching Shiji. Yu Yu is asleep, let's go out and talk. Just as Xiang Hui got up, Ching Jiayue, who was originally lying in the hospital bed, slowly opened her eyes. Although Ching Jiayue is young, she doesn't know everything. She also knows that her body has cast a shadow over this not wealthy family. What did the doctor say? Prepare for the surgery as soon as possible. Upon hearing these words, Xiang Hui's body was on the verge of collapse, and her voice was filled with tears. What should we do now? Governance. Where's the money? I'll figure out what to do. Cheng Shiji was fortunate that the heavens had given him a chance to travel, and he successfully earned nearly four kilograms of gold. With the addition of one's own savings, the problem of surgical expenses can basically be solved. For the subsequent treatment costs, one can figure it out on their own. You're watching the child here, I'm going to raise money. Okay. Returning home, Ching Shiji opened his laptop and started Baidu. When I wasn't on Baidu, I didn't know, but I was startled by 100 degrees. In the fourth year of the Chongzhen reign, Dengzhou city was about to erupt into a mutiny, which would almost turn the entire Shandong province into a chaotic Wuqiao mutiny. The Wuqiao mutiny can also be said to be a war triggered by a chicken. As one of the three Shan kings in the early Qing dynasty, Kong Yud's troops passed through Wuqiao. Due to the lack of provisions for their troops and the strike of merchants, the soldiers of the Dongjiang army were filled with complaints. As a result, an unbearable Dongjiang army soldier stole a chicken. But it ended up causing a big problem. Because this chicken is a chicken belonging to Wang Xiangchuan, a leader of the Donglin party, referred to as Lanli Baitiao, in the Donglin Dianjiang Lu, the wrong thing was thrown into the camp. However, Wang Xiangchuan's son refused to give up and demanded to find out the truth. Finally, the intolerable Dongjiang army suddenly erupted this means that Dengzhou will soon be captured by the Dongjiang army, which will plunder Dengzhou. The Ming court and the Dongjiang army fought around Dengzhou for nearly a year. From the fourth year of the Chongzhen reign to early February of the sixth year, Kong Yud abandoned Dengzhou city and surrendered to Huang Taiji. What should I do myself? Taking advantage of the mutiny, quickly make some money. The biggest difference between two time and space is not antiques, but rather hype. Cheng Shiji also knows that rarity counts as value. If Ming Dynasty antiques are brought over, it may ruin the antique market. The key is that he also does not have a shipping channel. Once targeted, the consequences are unimaginable. I checked the price of silver again. 4.97 yuan per gram, rounded up to 5 yuan. 1 kilogram is 500 grams, 250 yuan, and 1 kilogram is 16 tails per kilogram. 1 kilogram of silver can be exchanged for 2 tails of gold, with a cost of 2,500 yuan, which can be exchanged for 2 tails of 62.20 grams of gold. Ming Dynasty gold was impure, equivalent to approximately 925%, equivalent to approximately 20,600 yuan, which is about 8.2 times the profit. The question is, how to purchase industrial silver? This requires both qualifications and channels. A certain treasure does sell silver bars, and a small amount is acceptable. If a large amount is not targeted, it is impossible to make more than 8 times the profit, which is too risky. He made a move to exchange for gold in the late Ming dynasty, and once he caught the attention of others, he forcibly seized it Ching Shiji simply rejected silver, so he decided to bring some things and sell them. Maybe he could still make a few small profits. Although handicrafts, especially crystal music boxes, are priced high, they cannot be like cabbage. Once there are more, they are not worth any money. In the late Ming dynasty, there was a shortage of salt, but selling private salt seemed to be smuggling and involved beheading. Didn't you see so many TV dramas with such plots? It's better to sell kitchen knives. 
I heard that ancient smelting techniques were not very advanced, and the price of kitchen knives seems to be very expensive. Maybe one handful can sell for a few tails of silver. Thinking of this, I have encountered another serious problem. That's his attire. His own attire was considered bizarre in the Ming dynasty and could easily attract onlookers. Where do we buy ancient costumes? Both Taobao and Tao Dong surprisingly have them, especially Tao Dong, which can ship 24 hours a day. Cheng Shiji looked for a while and directly placed an order on a certain platform, spending 399 yuan. It was said that it was authorized by a local Taoist association. Bought hair on the temples, the hair is more manageable, get a fake bun. We bought it together. Wait, Ching Shiji suddenly saw a live broadcast of an antique sword on a certain audio channel. It looked good, and the beauty guide was still jumping on the sword. There is also a specialty store in Modong, and a Tang Jidao with a good appearance costs over 200 yuan. If it can sell for more than 10 tails of silver, it will be a huge profit, maybe you can hold on to a thigh. Thinking about it, Ching Shiji ordered 30 Tang Hengdao, Miao Dao, Long Quan Sword, and other items in one breath, spending seven to eight times the money from selling the golden beans. The next morning was not a weekend, and Ching Shiji didn't want to go to work anymore. Today, he needed to sell gold and also receive goods. There were quite a few things to attend to, so he asked for leave from his superiors again. Director Su. I. Old Cheng, I've heard about your situation as well. The child's matter is important. I told Chairman Wei of our union about your family's situation, and for the extremely poor families in our organization this year, I have arranged for you. Thank you, Director Su. Cheng Shiji not only took a leave, but also received government subsidies for extremely poor families, which is a welfare for state-owned enterprise employees. For example, Han Steel Group is also very humane in this regard. Every autumn, there is a Golden Autumn Scholarship. As long as the children of Han Steel Group employees are admitted to university, they will receive scholarships ranging from 10,000, 8,000, 5,000, or 3,000. Last year, the son of Secretary Wei of the Party Committee of the Government was admitted to the University of Mining and Technology and received a maximum annual scholarship of 10,000 yuan, which is equivalent to the company paying tuition fees for his son. As for extremely poor families, this is medical assistance for some seriously ill workers, with a maximum of 60,000 yuan and a minimum of 10,000 yuan. Many people believe that state-owned enterprises have no development prospects, but correspondingly, the welfare benefits of state-owned enterprises are not comparable to those of private enterprises. As an employee of Han Steel Group, Ching Shiji has enjoyed 15 years of implicit benefits, such as heating fees, property management fees, which he has not paid a penny for. He can also receive heating fees, summer heat subsidies, and other expenses every year. Cheng Shiji did not go to a certain Dafu again. He sold 3,862 grams of gold at three gold shops, and then his account increased by more than 1.279 million yuan. Cheng Shiji cooked food at home, used an insulated lunchbox, and took the food to the hospital. How has the money been raised? Don't worry, a sum of money will arrive in two days. Are you saying, our dad's original stock? Cheng Shiji's father, Cheng Weigua, was also a retired employee of the Han Steel Group. When Cheng Weigua retired from the military and was assigned to the Han Steel Group, in 1999, the Han Steel Group suffered from poor management and almost went bankrupt. He called on employees to purchase the original shares of the group company, and Cheng Weigua purchased 38,000 yuan of original shares. These shares have now increased more than 17 times, worth a full house, because they are constantly appreciating and no one is willing to sell them. The old man's small share is his lifeline. Cheng Shiji deceived Xiang Hui, of course, also for the sake of family harmony. Between couples, it is not possible to completely open up one's heart, and sometimes it is necessary to deceive with good intentions. 
Cheng Shiji decided to make a phone call later and communicate with the old man in advance. But, no, that's right at this moment. Cheng Shiji's father, Cheng Weigua, and mother, Gao Yenling, walked trembling into the hospital room, carrying a large handbag. Dad, Mom, what's wrong with you guys? Ching Shiji also wants to remind Ching Jiayue to say hello. Ching Jiayue sweetly said, Grandpa, Grandma. Yeah yeah, I miss you all. Here. What? Take it. Ching Shiji was carrying his bag and clearly felt the heaviness inside, weighing 17 or 18 pounds. Upon opening it, he saw that it was full of hundred yuan bills. Dad, Mom. Xiang Hui cried silently. Why are you crying? That's your daughter and also my granddaughter. Ching Weigua patted Ching Shiji's shoulder hard and said, I also sold the house, but no one bought it, it may take some time. Ching Shiji felt his eyes slightly moist, so he quickly wiped a corner of his eye. Now he can't cry easily. Otherwise, if he disappears in place, wouldn't it scare the second elder? However, the problem is that Cheng Shiji was overthinking. Although he shed tears, he did not travel through time. There is a delay in the 24.hour express delivery. After all the packages arrive, Cheng Shiji will purchase a fake hair bun and wear it on his head. Wearing a sea blue shirt that is over knee length and has a cross necked right lapel, along with white socks and blue shoes. Carrying 30 swords with scabbards and sheaths, plus 30.6 bottles of Urguotu without packaging labels. Prepare to traverse. Open your eyes again and come to the end of the Ming Dynasty. At this moment, Ching Shiji was very weak and hungry, not even wanting to move. Is it because there are too many things to bring? Someone, someone. Sir, do you have any instructions? The guy looked at Cheng Shiji in this outfit and was slightly surprised. Give me some food to eat. Sir, please wait a moment. After a luxurious feast, with authentic rooster stewed with mushrooms and stewed lamb, Cheng Shiji finally regained some strength. Just then, there were faint sounds of hooves and cries of killing outside, creating a chaotic scene. Cheng Shiji's heart tightened, my grass, can't it be that the mutiny was brought forward earlier? End of this chapter Chapter 6 Eating full and powerful before making money You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Eating full and powerful before making money Chapter 005 Eat enough before making money Qin Guodong was a general of the Dongjiang army, and he was originally a defender of Haizhou. In April of the first year of Tianqi, his hometown Haizhou Wei fell. Chen Guodong's family of eleven, except for Chen Lian and his brother Chen Guoyang who survived, nine people, including Chen Guodong's father, mother, two older brothers, one older sister, two sister-in-law, one nephew, and one younger sister, all died at the hands of Jian Nu. Chen Guodong, who was only eleven years old at the time, fled to Guanlu Island with his nine-year-old Chen Guoyang along with the refugees. Later, Mao Wenlong launched a surprise attack on Ho Jin Junjiang and opened the town of Dongjiang, making him a member of the Dongjiang army and civilians. In the sixth year of the Tianqi era, 17. Year. Old Qin Guodong officially became a member of the Dongjiang army. He accompanied the Dongjiang army in several attacks on Jianu and was promoted from a minor soldier to a general due to his meritorious service. But the good times didn't last long. Mao Shuai, who had always been rebellious and unruly, had a conflict with Yuan Chonghuan. As a result, Mao Wenlong was killed and the Dongjiang army became scattered. Yuan Chonghuan supported Chen Jisheng, the former deputy general of the Dongjiang army, as the commander. In. Chief, but Chen Jisheng could not obey the crowd and was constantly plotting. In March of the third year of Chongzhen, Chen Jisheng, the second commander, dot in dot chief of the Dongjiang army, was killed by Lu Xingji, Lu Xingji, and others. Huang Long, who came from the Guaning army in Liaoshi, succeeded as the third commander, dot in dot chief of the Dongjiang army. Huang Long, the newly appointed commander, dot in dot chief of the Dongjiang army, 
took office with three torches. The first one caught the attention of Gung Zhongming's younger brother, Dusi Gung Zhongyu. Gung Zhongming led his troops to seek refuge with the governor of Denglai, Sun Yuanhua. Chen Guodong, on the other hand, was one of the generals under Gung Zhongming's command. Unlike ordinary soldiers, Chen Guodong strongly disliked those generals who fought against one today and the other tomorrow. When the Dongjiang army is united, even Jianyu can be treated with caution. But after the split, who will treat them as dishes? After arriving in Dangzhou, Chen Guodong deeply felt the malice of Dangzhou and Shandong people. Any Dangzhou person staring at them seemed to be guarding against thieves. Chen Guodong, accompanied by his regular patrols, suddenly saw a flurry of flying chickens and dogs, and several soldiers from the Dongjiang army rushed towards him. General Chen. What's so alarming? They. They. Bully people. Chen Guodong led his troops down to the south gate of Dangzhou city, and this scene made his mind skip a beat. More than a dozen soldiers of the Dangzhou army, wielding dazzling blades, are threatening a group of refugees. The soldiers of the Dangzhou army instructed these refugees to open the packages they carried with them, throw gold, silver, coins, jewelry, and other items into a large basket and even peel off their clothes. The naked refugees curled up and trembled. Not only are men among the refugees required to be naked, but also women and children. The refugees are all thin and bony, even if their upper bodies are exposed, they are still pointed and pointed by the soldiers of the Dangzhou army. If their movements are slightly slow, they will be kicked and punched. If these refugees were from Shandong, Chen Guodong would never say a word and pretend not to see them. The problem is that these refugees are people who cannot survive on the islands in Dongjiang town. When they see the Dongjiang army being transferred to Dengzhou, they are worried about the Jianyu attack. Without the protection of the Dongjiang army soldiers, they are just a group of cattle and sheep waiting to be slaughtered. Unfortunately, Shandong, which is extremely exclusive, is not willing to accept refugees from Liaodong. It is unclear whether it was a spontaneous action by soldiers from the Dengzhou army or a suggestion from above. These Liaodong refugees were driven to the moat below the city. A topless woman screamed and struggled to keep Dengzhou soldiers away. It turned out that the child in the woman's arms was wearing a silver longevity lock on her neck, which was discovered by the soldiers. The soldiers grabbed the lock and forcefully pulled it. A bloodstain was strangled on the child's neck, and the child's mother opened her mouth and bit at the soldier from the Dengzhou army. The soldiers of Dengzhou army were furious and shook off the woman, holding a long spear, fiercely stabbing at her. Puzzling. The sharp spear penetrated the woman's back without any delay, and also penetrated the mother who wanted to protect her child with her body. The spear pierced through the woman's back, but it pierced through the chest of the child in her arms. Chen Guodong became angry and walked up to the soldier of the Dengzhou army, slapping him with a wave of his hand. Naomi. The soldier of the Dengzhou army who was beaten threw down his spear and ran towards the city, shouting loudly as he ran, the Dongjiang army has rebelled. As the saying goes, Rome was not frozen in a day, and the conflict and hostility between the Shandong army and the Dongjiang army were not caused in a day. Therefore, both sides began to fight together. Qing Shiji was somewhat grateful that he had brought a sword this time. With a knife in his hand, Qing Shiji had some confidence. As long as someone comes to kill him, he won't be at a loss. Like a soldier who can be blown away by a gust of wind, he should be able to kill two or three by himself. A middle-aged man is so fierce that he is afraid of himself. The guy still had some doubts. He remembers very clearly that when Qing Shiji moved in, he carried very little and absolutely no knives, especially the Tang Straight Sword that Qing Shiji is currently holding, which looks quite good in texture. My guest, don't worry, it won't be chaotic here. This is best. Lu Jiyin can also be considered the local leader of Dengzhou City. At the beginning of the chaos, the staff had already begun to close the door. The door of Lu Jiyin was very thick, 
with three inches of wooden boards. Unless it was burned down, it was really difficult to break through the door and enter. The chaos lasted for a full half hour before slowly stopping. The air began to permeate with a smell of blood, making it appear that there were many murders. Cheng Shiji looked cautiously at the door until the handsome guy returned. My guest, it's okay. What's going on? I heard it was the Liaodong soldiers causing trouble. This made Cheng Shiji feel a bit uneasy. If he hadn't consulted historical materials, he wouldn't have figured it out. Now he knows that Dengzhou City is already a volcano about to erupt, and there is a possibility of earth shaking at any time. Cheng Shiji decided to go to the governor's office in Dengzhou to try his luck. Sun Yuanhua was training the new army in Dengzhou, and perhaps he needed such a divine weapon in his own hands. The procurement cost ranges from over 200 yuan to over 300 yuan, and as long as he can sell more than 10 tails of silver, he has a profit of more than 10 times. Stepping out of the Lu Ji Inn, the streets were bustling with people, and a group of Yaman officials were driving the people to clean the streets. Barrels of water were poured onto the streets, quickly turning into a faint red color. Wow! Just as Cheng Shiji was walking forward, he suddenly heard the mournful cries of babies. He followed the sound, but did not see the baby or the woman holding the child. Although the crying sound of the baby was not far away, Cheng Shiji instinctively walked over and saw a swaddle on the nearby pile of soil, from which bursts of crying could be heard. Cheng Shiji gently picked up the baby. The baby was very thin and weak, with dry skin on its small mouth, indicating that it had not eaten for a long time. He shouted to the surrounding crowd, Whose child is this? However, if no one pays attention to him, the pedestrians around him walk independently. Abandoned baby. Cheng Shiji quickly thought of this situation and pretended to leave the street, holding his phone upside down in his palm, revealing the camera lens and starting to record. Shortly after Cheng Shiji left, a woman emerged from the corner of the wall and knelt down to kowtow to Cheng Shiji's back. Just as the woman was getting up, Cheng Shiji walked over holding the baby. The woman looked up at Cheng Shiji's feet. You're such a ruthless person, why should you throw away your child? Cheng Shiji's daughter had congenital heart disease and was also a premature baby. She was born and raised in the hospital for over six months before being successfully discharged from the hospital. For this, he spent nearly 100,000 yuan. Many people advise Cheng Shiji to just pretend that he has never had this child before and is still young, so he can have another one. Cheng Shiji has some disdain for mothers who have abandoned their children. The woman covered her face and wept mournfully. Keep up with your child. The woman saw that Cheng Shiji had no intention of adopting the child, so she picked up the child and reached out to pinch its neck. Pop! Cheng Shiji was really angry and slapped the woman in the face. You are such a ruthless woman, I want to report to the government. The woman kowtowed to Cheng Shiji, choking up as she kowtowed, I don't want to. There's nothing I can do. My family is gone, my money is gone. I can't live anymore. With the woman's grief and pain, Cheng Shiji finally understood what was going on. This woman was originally from Liangxiang County, surnamed Yang and named Yunyang. In January of the third year of Chongzhen, Liangxiang County was conquered by Jianmu, and Liangxiang County was slaughtered. The fate of women was even more tragic than that of men, and Yang Yunyang was kidnapped by Jianmu. Last five years, the court recaptured the city of Yongping. Due to her serious illness, Jianyu did not take her to the outside of the pass, but abandoned her in the city of Yongping. After the recapture of Yongping Prefecture, the government repatriated the captured civilians to their hometowns. Yang Yunyang was mistreated and became pregnant. Her family despised her for being shameful, so they drove her away. Yang Yun thought about committing suicide, but when she threw herself into the river, she was saved by someone and poured herself into the river. She was so scared that she didn't dare to die. Helpless, she had to beg while heading south. 
On her way south, Yang Yinyang met a middle dot aged widower named Luo Gui. Luo Gui did not despise her experience and thus brought her to Dengzhou City. Later, the two got married, but with the birth of the child, rumors emerged. Her husband Luo Gui believed that the child she gave birth to was a wild species and kicked it out. Cheng Shiji could only sigh at Yang Yinyang's experience. When was your child born? July 1st, Cheng Shiji can be certain that this child should belong to Luo Gui. After all, Yongping Prefecture was recaptured in May of the third year of Chongzhen, and it only takes 280 days to conceive a child, even if it is beyond the due date, it can take up to two weeks. Cheng Shiji hesitated. If he didn't care about Yang Yunyang, Yang Yunyang and her child would only have a dead end. But, come on, how to deal with it? He is just a passerby. Cheng Shiji touched the silver in his arms, and he still had over seven tails of silver. Although it wasn't much, it was okay to give Yang Yunyang a little. Thinking of this, Cheng Shiji took out a piece of silver and gave Yang Yunyang about one or two yuan. The exact amount was unknown to Cheng Shiji. Xia Ngong, but I can't take it. Why? Yang Yunyang held the child and looked deep into the alley. In the depths of the alley, three big yellow teeth were exposed, dressed in rags. They should be the leader of beggars, after all, ordinary beggars cannot eat until their faces are shiny. A woman carrying an immature baby with money in her hands is considered original sin. Thinking of this, Cheng Shiji said, You come with me. Cheng Shiji didn't think much about it, so he decided to rent a room for Yang Yunyang at the Lu Ji Inn. As long as he sold his swords, he would have a lot of money. By paying more for the room, Yang Yunyang could live on. As for the future, that's fate. Cheng Shiji walked ahead, and Yang Yunyang followed behind. He vaguely felt a tail behind him. Take out your phone again, put it in your sleeve, and turn on the recording function, Cheng Shiji didn't turn back and clicked on the video playback. Sure enough, three tails appeared behind him, but it wasn't the beggar in the alley, but three people wearing waist knives and dressed in blue uniforms. What's going on? Cheng Shiji pondered, it was very likely that he was from the Xinping Dianjian pawn shop. A thousand tails of silver, which was a huge sum of money in the late Ming dynasty, was he trying to eat black. Two thugs must be hired immediately, otherwise it's really not safe. Thinking of this, Cheng Shiji clenched his Tang Zhidao tightly in his hand. It's still not well prepared, unfortunately, the electric shock rod cannot be purchased directly online. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been so worried. At this moment, Cheng Shiji discovered a beggar on the side of the street. This beggar is different from other beggars in that the beggars around him are out of place. His body is covered in scars, including old wounds on his face, neck, chest, and arms, especially a terrifying scar on his face, which makes people feel shivering. Especially when the beggar had clothes on his body, which were all torn pieces of cloth, his beard and hair were already gray and white. Looking at him in his fifties and sixties, the beggar lazily moved his body, revealing his back, which was not scarred. Just you. Cheng Shiji walked towards the beggar, slowly squatting down and taking out a silver coin from his pocket. The copper coin had already been sold by him, and now he still had six or seven tails of silver in his hand. This piece of silver is the smallest one among them, which can be exchanged for hundreds of copper coins. I want to hire you to help me with things. I only know how to kill people. Ching Shiji's eyes lit up and he said, If someone kills me, help me kill him. If you want to hire me, give me the money first. Here you are. The beggar took Ching Shiji's silver and weighed it in his hand, saying, Old man Shen Ming, this life is yours. Ching Shiji led Yang Yunyang and Shen Mingyu towards Lu Ji Yin. Arriving at Lu Ji Yin, the waiter looked at Ching Shiji with a puzzled expression on his face. Yang Yunyang was okay to say that although her clothes were in tatters and at least they were still clean, Shen Mingyu was emitting a foul odor all over her body. 
Ching Shiji stuffed a piece of silver into the clerk's hand and said, Prepare some hot water for him, let him take a bath, find him some clothes, don't need to be too good, just wear them. Sir, please come inside. Having money makes things easier. However, after getting Shen Mingyu dressed up and the money he gave him, Ching Shiji only had one or two silver coins left in his hands. After more than half an hour, Ching Shiji saw Shen Mingyu, who had been dressed in a new outfit, once again appear in front of Lu Ji in his room. Ching Shiji was stunned. He almost couldn't recognize Shen Mingyu. The original Shen Mingyu had gray hair and beard, a dirty face, and looked as if he was in his sixties or seventies. But now he has become a middle dot aged man. Shen Mingyu pays respects to his master. Don't call me master, call me boss. Let's call it owner, instead. Yes, my boss. Shen Mingyu, how old are you? I'm six years old at thirty. Looking at you like you're sixty-three years old, not seventy-three. Gugu. Shen Mingyu looked at Cheng Shiji with embarrassment. Cheng Shiji took out his last piece of silver and said, Hey buddy, prepare the food and drinks. He decided to eat first and then make money. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Using Gold to Test People's Hearts You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 7 Using Gold to Test People's Hearts Chapter 006 To be precise, it's just preparing the dishes. Ching Shiji occasionally drinks alcohol. Apart from attending company social events, he only drinks ergotu, which is economical. Quickly, the waiter brought a large table of hard dishes. Although Shen Mingyu was a bit hungry, he stood straight. Yang Yunyang also stood there, one on the left and one on the right, as if humming two generals. Sit down and eat together. No, my boss, there's a difference in hierarchy. Hee hee, I'm not a noble person either. Let's just consider myself a merchant. According to the laws of the Ming dynasty, I'm also a lowly person. Ching Shiji pointed to the seat across from him and said, Hey buddy, add two sets of bowls and chopsticks. Isn't that good? Yang Yunyang picked up a mantu and said, You can eat mantu if you want. How can we do that? The child will be hungry. Yang Yunyang said shyly, Just give me a bowl of kanji. Stop talking nonsense, sit down and eat together. Cheng Shiji began to pick up chopsticks to eat meat, but Shen Mingyu sat down and said he was sitting. His buttocks were just slightly touched, like a spring, ready to get up at any time. In the Ming dynasty, Cheng Shiji's meal was also very luxurious, with chicken, fish, shrimp, and meat. Lu Ji's chef had already had the shadow of later generations of Lu cuisine, also known as palace cuisine, which ordinary people could not eat because it was too expensive. Although Lu Ji is not considered a high dot end restaurant, a meal of about five or six dishes costs six or seven coins of silver, and on average, each dish costs one coin of silver. At first, Ching Shiji had no concept of the prices of the Ming dynasty, but now he knows that it is completely different from what is recorded in later records. Just like lamb, eight pounds of high dot quality lamb costs one and two cents of silver, and on average, each pound is equivalent to one and two cents of silver. If settled in copper coins, it would be twelve copper coins. And Cheng Shiji's meal was equivalent to the price of sixty-four pounds of lamb. There are also quite a few vegetables among them. For the income of the Ming dynasty, according to Lu Ji, they could earn over five hundred taels of silver per year, equivalent to over forty taels of silver per month, which is about one or two taels of silver per day. While eating, Ching Shiji took out a bottle of ergoto from the cabinet in the room and looked at Shen Mingyu, saying, Mingyu, do you want to drink? Drink. Ching Shiji unscrewed the wine bottle and casually poured a bowl for Shen Mingyu, which weighed about half a pound. He also poured a bowl himself. Shen Ming looked at the wine in the bowl with a dull expression and said, Master, this wine. How's it going? It smells so good. Drink lightly. Hiss. 
Shen Mingyu took a big sip and felt as if his throat was on fire. His face turned red and he said, good wine. Mingyu, according to your accent, doesn't it sound like you're from Dengzhou? I'm not from Dengzhou, I'm from Guide Prefecture. Guide Prefecture, from Hunan. Mmm. Are you from the military? Yes, I used to be a thousand households in front of Gui Dui, but later. Have you ever started a family? I am a poor soldier, who would like to marry my daughter to me. Ching Shiji sighed, it is said that they are only poor for three generations, and indeed they are. Ching Shiji's eyes were fixed on Yang Yunyang, and he was about to ask Shen Mingyu if he wanted to marry Yang Yunyang. As long as they were willing, Ching Shiji could rest assured. Who would have thought that before Ching Shiji could speak, a commotion could be heard outside the door? Noble people, noble people, you cannot enter inside. Get lost. The sound of footsteps rang out, and Ching Shiji looked at a tall figure outside the door, walking rapidly. Ching Shiji instinctively grabbed Tang Zhidao next to the cabinet. His reaction was fast, while Shen Mingyu's reaction was faster. He jumped directly at the door and blocked it with his body. Get out of the way. No way. The one on the other side reaches out and hits. Pop. The other party punched Shen Mingyu in the chest, but Shen Mingyu didn't move. If you hit me again, you'll fight back. The other party scolded and said, Get out of here. Cheng Shiji stepped forward and asked, Who are you? Shen Mingyu stepped aside half of his body, and Cheng Shiji saw the person coming clearly. It's you. It's me. The other party spent a golden bean and over 500 copper coins to buy him a bottle of Urguota's big grudge seed last time. Do you still have any alcohol? Have Cheng Shiji gestured for the other party to come in. Your wine bottle is a rare treasure in the world. Although it is not really carved with crystal, it is even more crystal clear and rare. We don't take advantage of you, the bottle is yours. The middle dot aged man gestured to the servant behind him to hand the wine bottle to Ching Shiji. The servant placed the wine bottle on the table. Ching Shiji is speechless. What's the use of the white wine bottle? Beer bottles can still sell for 50 cents, but white wine bottles can only sell for 20 cents a kilogram. Ching Shiji smiled and said, I've sold you the wine, so naturally the wine bottle belongs to you too. That's what you said. As he spoke, the servant quickly put away the wine bottle and carried it directly in his arms. Can you sell this wine? Sell. How about the same price as last time? Okay. The last time Ching Shiji had a bottle of Urguotu, his income was 50,000 yuan, and the cost was 18 yuan, which was about 300 times the profit, much easier than pouring gold. That wine is not much anymore, only a dozen or so bottles. I can't buy so much, such good wine. It's okay to drink it once in a while, how can I drink it every day? How about making friends, one golden bean and one bottle? That's interesting. Pop. The middle dot aged man was quite generous, casually patting a handful of golden beans on the table. Ching Shiji counted them, totaling seventeen. A total of seventeen, how about Ching gifting you another bottle? Great. Ching Shiji puts the Urguotu in the cabinet on the table, and the middle dot aged man can't take away the eighteen bottles of wine. Fortunately, the servant behind him is a man. He takes off his coat directly, which is not cold now. A dozen bottles of Baijiu are wrapped up, and he carries them directly out of the room. Ching Shiji was overjoyed that he had money now. After all, he is not alone now, but four people. Especially Shen Mingyu, this guy is a big-bellied man. One gene of Mantu weighs thirteen in one meal. It seems that he is still hungry. Ching Shiji is a fat man of more than 200 jin. He can't eat a single mantu. Unconsciously, Ching Shiji drank half a pound of Urguotu. His alcohol tolerance was actually average, half a pound was fine, even one pound was fine. He had never been drunk before. 
Let Shen Mingyu drink again, he won't be willing to drink anything. You should know that a golden bean is equivalent to eight or nine tails of silver. Drinking this kind of wine is equivalent to drinking silver. After the middle dot aged man left, Lu Ji's shopkeeper asked to see him. Could you please discuss this, sir? What's up, do you still have that kind of wine? Nature, but not much. Can you sell us some to Lu Ji? Sure. Cheng Shiji pondered that when he was alone, he could live in such a room with a living room, but now that Yang Yunyang and Shen Ming have met these three people, it's a bit inconvenient. Do you have a small courtyard in your store? There are two independent cross courtyards, one on the east and one on the west. How much does it cost per month to cross hospital? There are seven rooms across the courtyard, which usually cost two and six cents a day. If you stay for a month, then it's cheaper to give seven tails of silver. Just now you also heard that this bottle of wine costs eight or nine tails of silver. Thanks to these days' care, one bottle of wine takes a month. What do you think? That's great. Cheng Shiji picked up four bottles of wine and handed them to the shopkeeper, who happily left. Cheng Shiji asked his colleagues to help him move, moving from Shangfang to Dongchuan Courtyard. He actually thought about renting a separate courtyard, but the problem is that Lu Ji can at least ensure his safety. Although he has a guard, it is still unclear what exactly happened to Shen Mingyu. He also needs Lu Ji's living environment. There are seven rooms in the East Cross Courtyard, including three main rooms, two inverted rooms, and two wing rooms. There is also a stone table and a small pavilion in the courtyard, and the environment is relatively good. Yang Yunyang timidly said, Master, I know how to cook. Otherwise, let's start the fire and cook by ourselves. Mingyu, go out and buy some grain, firewood, rice, oil, salt, and so on. Shen Mingyu was full and now he had strength. Okay. Also, help me find a local 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 snake, I want to sell these swords. Okay. Qing Shiji gave Shen Mingyu a golden bean. Shen Mingyu left with the money. After Shen Ming left, Yang Yunyang asked somewhat puzzled, Master, are you not afraid that he will run away with your money? He ran away and then ran away. Running away is his loss. Cheng Shiji is actually testing Shen Mingyu, after all, relationships between people are all about getting along. Although a golden bean is worth eight or nine tails of silver, it is really nothing to Cheng Shiji. Cheng Shiji plans to leave Dengzhou if he can sell these swords, because Dengzhou is too dangerous. However, the problem is that plans can never keep up with changes. End of this chapter Chapter 8 Yongcheng, Guide Prefecture, Song Kangyin You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Chapter 8 Yongcheng, Guide Prefecture, Song Kangyin Chapter 007 The Blessed Little Jiusin, Wow! The sound of Yang Yunyang's baby crying began. Cheng Shiji followed the sound and looked away. I saw Yang Yunyang feeling a bit flustered. What's wrong with the doll? Yang Yunyang sighed and said, Maybe you're hungry. Cheng Shiji thought Yang Yunyang was shy, so he pointed to the right side room and said, Go in, feed the child. Yang Yunyang remained motionless, her head hanging lower and her face turning red. Nu Nu. What's going on? Nu no. The remaining voice was so weak that it was almost imperceptible. If it's a young person, I'm afraid I don't know what to do. As a newcomer, Cheng Shiji is very aware that many women, even though they are in good health, may not have milk. Cheng Shiji's wife Xiang Hui is like this. Xiang Hui is 1.62 meters tall, not too tall. When she got married, she would weigh 105 pounds. When she gave birth to her son Ching Jialong, she weighed over 120 pounds, not too thin. However, the problem is that Xiang Hui has no milk. He uses old hen soup, pig's feet, Christian carp soup, milk, beef, and even a professional milkman, acupuncture and moxibustion, and massage. 
He has tried everything, but still has no way. The proportion of women without milk is very common in later generations, and it is not uncommon in ancient times. Some are due to physical fitness, while others are due to genetic problems. As for Yang Yin Yang's problem, Ching Shiji is not clear. He is not a doctor and cannot make a judgment. Ching Shiji thought for a moment and said, First, boil some hot water, ask the shopkeeper for some honey, and I'll figure out how to deal with the rest. In fact, there is no such thing as milk. For wealthy people, the natural solution is to hire a wet nurse. If one is not enough, you can hire two or three. There is also a way for the poor to feed their babies carefully cooked rice oil. This involves boiling the rice in a pot until it becomes sticky, creating an oily rice soup that can be given to newborn babies. Although it may not be as good as milk powder, the child can still grow up. Cheng Shiji's cousin was born during a time when resources were particularly scarce, and his fourth grandmother didn't have any milk, so she raised him with millet oil. Cheng Shiji doesn't want to have much to do now. He can find a wet nurse for Yang Yunyang, but he can go back to later generations to buy milk powder, add protein powder, and raise the child without any problem. Ching Shiji returned to the main room of the courtyard, closed the door, lay in bed, and began to brew emotions. As he began to close his eyes, tears began to secrete, and a white light began to emerge in the air, opening his eyes again, Ching Shiji returned to later generations. Shortly after Ching Shiji left, Yang Yunyang appeared at the entrance of the main house with her child in her arms. She listened attentively to the movements in the room and recognized that there was no one in the room, so she approached the door. Just as Yang Yunyang was about to open the door, a cough came from behind her. Yang Yunyang's face changed slightly and she quickly turned back. I don't know when, Shen Mingyu has already returned. Yang Yunyang stared at Shen Mingyu and said, What? When did you come back? Don't worry about this. I advise you to be honest, otherwise I will twist your neck. I just want to see. Yang Yunyang's face turned cold and she said, When did you discover me? When I first saw you, I noticed it. Shen Mingyu looked contemptuous and said, As a Yuning, how could you possibly have a child? I don't care what you want to do, but don't ruin my job. The experience that Yang Yunyang told Qing Shiji was actually half true and half false. Her name was indeed real, and she was from Liangxiang County. All other experiences were fake. However, she is not a good family, but a swindler. Yen, also known as Yen, is a woman who uses her beauty to deceive men, and there are also men who deceive women. Porcelain is like hitting porcelain. Sparrow, on the other hand, means a gap, referring to a position in the officialdom. If there is a gap, someone will rush to take office and block it. This is also a gang crime. Gold is fortune-telling, evaluation is storytelling, skin is selling wild medicine, color is performing magic, hanging is performing arts, and so on. Yang Yunyang originally had a certain reputation in the martial arts world. Ching Shiji pawned the crystal music box to the Xingping No Pawn Shop, and that night it was delivered to the owner Song Yang. The Song family is a local daimyo in Dengzhou, otherwise they would not have the strength to operate this pawn shop. This crystal music box was immediately favored by Song Fan, the eldest son of the Song family. But the problem is, Cheng Shiji was a live pawn at the time, which means he wanted to redeem his crystal music box. Song Yang was just a child of the Song family, and he had no courage or courage to refuse Song Fan. Moreover, this music box had already been priced at 3,000 taels of silver to settle the bill. Helpless, Song Yang had no choice but to search for people from Jiang Hu and scam Ching Shiji out of his money. When Ching Shiji had no money, he would naturally be unable to redeem the crystal music box. As for why Ching Shiji was not forcibly robbed, first of all, Ching Shiji only lived in Lu Ji and rarely went out. Lu Ji is also a famous Lu family in Dengzhou, although not as powerful as the Song family. However, this kind of thing has caused some loss for the Song family, 
so they naturally dare not make a big fuss about it. Secondly, there are those thugs of the Song family. Ordinary people in Dengzhou may not know about them, but the big shots are all men cheating. However, cheating is the simplest and most convenient way. Moreover, once he is deceived by a woman, Ching Shiji himself is too embarrassed to spread it around. Yang Yunyang took on this job the next day and began to stare at Ching Shiji. Especially when Ching Shiji spent money on Lu San's behalf and gave him the packaged food, Yang Yunyang saw that Ching Shiji was kind-hearted and decided to take advantage of his kindness. The baby girl in Yang Yunyang's arms is actually an abandoned baby. Poor people who cannot survive tend to prioritize sons over daughters, and they may strangle or discard the baby girl. Yang Yunyang only spent 15 won, equivalent to half a chicken, to buy this baby girl and waited for Ching Shiji to come to her door. Yang Yunyang noticed that Shen Ming was going to harm her, so she thought about how to deal with it. On the other hand, Ching Shiji came to a mother and baby supplies store and bought three sets of bottles in one go, namely 120 milliliters, 280 milliliters, and 360 milliliters, with three different sizes. Then, I bought a full two boxes of milk powder, 30.6 pacifiers, and a thermos, which cost me over 3,000 yuan, which can be considered a lot of bleeding. The 16 gold beans that Cheng Shiji will receive were not sold in Hanhai City. Instead, it took him two hours to arrive at the provincial capital by high dot speed rail, where he sold the gold before returning to Hanhai City. Cheng Shiji left milk powder and milk bottles at home and rode to the trade city on an electric bike. He bought a crystal music box of the same model for his daughter and a perfume suit for Xiang Hui. This time it's not just a small sample, but a real set. Now he can be considered a wealthy person, not short of those few hundred yuan. When she arrived at the hospital, Cheng Jiayue was sitting on the hospital bed, holding crayons and drawing her abstract drawings. Dad. Yeah yeah, did you listen to your mother today? Listen, yeah yeah is very obedient. You you, look what this is. Ching Shiji handed the crystal music box to Ching Jiayue. Wow. Ching Jiayue became excited and her face turned red. Xiang Hui punched Ching Shiji and said, Look at you, hurry up, call a doctor. The doctor and nurse entered the ward and were busy for a while. Xian Hui and Ching Shiji are at the door. The surgery has been scheduled, but Ye Ye is too small and does not have a suitable heart source. Just wait and wait. I'm afraid Ye Ye can't wait. Ching Shiji sighed and hugged Xiang Hui. Xiang Hui's eyes turned red again. She found the perfume suit that Ching Shiji bought here. You are spending money recklessly again. Money earned is spent. Over the years, you and I have suffered. Husband, I'm really scared. Don't be afraid, there's me. Comforting his wife and playing with Ching Jiayue for a while, Ching Shiji returned home. There was no suitable heart source in China, so he went abroad. The heart transplant surgery in beautiful country was about seven or eight times more expensive than in China. Ching Shiji checked Baidu and also consulted with an agent, and found out that the cost of a heart transplant surgery in beautiful country is at least 1.5 million US dollars, not including the cost of rejection treatment. Both domestically and internationally, this disease requires significant investment. To make money, one must make money, even if Dengzhou is dangerous, one must work hard. Ching Shiji arrived at the empty room on the second floor, brewing emotions and shedding tears as he traveled through. When Ching Shiji arrived in Dengzhou at the end of the Ming Dynasty, a large cart entered the small courtyard where two porters were unloading goods. The cart contained the grains, vegetables, and meat that Shen Mingyu had purchased, as well as several bedding and sheets. One of the porters in charge of transporting goods was actually Lu San, who had a two-faced relationship before. A new scar appeared on Lu San's face. Cheng Shiji said, Lu San, what's going on? No it's okay. We can also be considered destined. 
If you have any difficulties, just let me know and I won't stand idly by if I can help you. The young man next to him was a bit anxious. However, Lu San did not say. There's no other way. Boss. Yang Yun Yang has been staring at the main room in the wing room. She really didn't see when Ching Shiji entered the room. Did she take a short rest in the afternoon? Do you have boiling water? Yes. The slaves will be delivered soon. Not long after, Yang Yin Yang brought a teapot of boiling water. Cheng Shiji picked up hot water and poured it into a basin. He then scalded the nipple and bottle in boiling water, and then used the remaining boiling water to start ironing the milk powder. Cheng Shiji's movements are very skilled, and he has fed at least one dot third of his two children formula. Have you learned it? Cheng Shiji pointed to the milk powder bucket and said, This is called milk powder. Two spoons of milk powder and one spoonful of protein powder, mix well, test the temperature, and then feed the child. By the way, does that child have a name? No. How about calling it Jiesen? Cheng Shiji named the baby Jiesen to make up for his regret. Cheng Jiayue was sick from birth. As a mother, Xiang Hui also knew that Jiayue had a high probability of dying prematurely and became pregnant. When Cheng Shiji found out, she let Xiang Hui have a miscarriage. He was just worried that as long as he had the third child, the second child Ching Jiayue would be ignored. Xie Dong's family gave him a name. Ching Shiji gave the other two bottles, over thirty pacifiers, and milk powder to Yang Yunyang. Yang Yunyang went back and forth four times, and finally brought these things into the east wing room. Until Yang Yunyang held a bottle and fed the baby. She just realized that the bottle sent by Ching Shiji was actually made of glass. In this era, glass is of great value. As she fed the baby, she murmured, You're also a lucky one. These things are worth a lot of money at first glance. Xia Jiaxin was also hungry for a long time, greedily drinking milk, and her face was full of satisfaction. Yang Yin Yang is also lamenting, What kind of person, what kind of fate? If it weren't for Ching Shiji, the baby would probably have lost its bones. However, now that Xia Jiaxin has a name, she can use glass bottles and milk powder, which may only be enjoyed by wealthy families. Yang Yunyang looked towards the direction of the main house with the remaining light of her eyes. Since she approached Ching Shiji, Shen Mingyu stood at the door like a wooden stake. As long as she moved, Yang Yunyang had no doubt that Shen Mingyu would twist her neck. Master, what should I do? Yang Yunyang was a bit at a loss watching Shen Mingyu purchase supplies, it was very convenient. With food and daily necessities, he spent less than five tails of silver, leaving only three or two tails of silver. Mingyu, did you find the agent you asked for? Shen Ming said, Sir, please come inside. Are you? Cheng Shiji looked at the man in front of him, who was less than four feet three in height and had a figure resembling that of a child. Guide Prefecture Yongcheng Song Kanyin. End of this chapter. Chapter 9 General Gung Zhongming of the Fu Army. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 9 General Gung Zhongming of the Fu Army, Chapter 008 Song Kanyin also known as Song Xianse, was not actually a broker, but a martial artist. Song Kanyin was born in Yongcheng, Guide Mansion. He had studied hard since he was a child, and he had no hope. He was enlightened at the age of six. At the age of twelve, he participated in the boy test in Yongcheng County. Sun Chuanting, who was then the supervisor of the county of Yongcheng, accepted him on the spot. Because the Song family was not a noble family in Yongcheng, he could only rank third. In the same year, he, she participated in the imperial examination, and if he, she passed the examination, he, she could become a child. It's just a pity that Song Kanyin had bad luck. When he went to the capital of Guide Prefecture to participate in the imperial examination, he was infected with a cold. It took him more than three months to recover from this illness, but he missed the imperial examination. 
For the 12-year-old Song Kanyin, missing the imperial examination was not a big deal. With his knowledge, it was not difficult to pass the imperial examination. However, the problem was that Song Kanyin gradually realized that his figure was not quite right. As a 12-year-old child, his height increased significantly every year, but he did not increase by an inch. Realizing this issue, Song Kanyin was very desperate. When choosing a scholar, the first thing to consider was his appearance. In terms of facial features, Song Kanyin had no problem, but if his figure was too short, there would be a problem. Until the age of 15, Song Kanyin was also desperate. He took his luggage and went to Longkong to meet the sorcerer Wu Xianwen. It is said that Wu Xianwen had the ability to calculate for 300 years before and 500 years later. Originally, Song Kanyin only wanted to ask about his future, but Wu Xianwen opened another door. From then on, Song Kanyin followed Wu Xianwen to learn martial arts. After six years of study, Wu Xianwen died. According to their Taoist teachings, it was to ascend to immortality through feathering. Song Kanyin began to travel the rivers and lakes. Song Kanyin was proficient in the calculation of qi, and could observe the fate of each person through their facial images. Some were wealthy and prosperous throughout their lives, some were in turmoil, some were like walking on thin ice, some were plagued by misfortune, and some were full of ominous images. When he met Qing Shiji, he couldn't tell what he looked like. Now that Song Kongyin had just traveled the martial arts world, he thought he was not proficient in his studies and wanted to observe Qing Shiji again nearby. Coincidentally, he encountered Shen Mingyu inquiring about the information of the broker, so he volunteered and claimed to be the broker. Qing Shiji naturally heard of Song Kongyin, also known as Song Xianse. Of course, his understanding of Song Xianse was also because he was the founding military commander of Li Zicheng in history, who made great contributions to Li Zicheng's establishment of the Das Han Empire. I don't know what your needs are, sir. Cheng Shiji took out a seemingly tang horizontal knife, which was a horizontal knife with a matte black scabbard. He handed it to Shen Mingyu and said, Mingyu, take this knife for self.defense. Shen Mingyu gently pulled out this Tang Hengdao, and saw that the blade was bright. With a gentle flick, it emitted a loud golden roar. Good sword. Cheng Shiji then took out another handle, which had a similar style. Of course, this one had a dark black blade on it, and the scabbard was made of leather. The horizontal knife, which was over 80 centimeters long and with the handle, was over a meter long, almost reaching Song Kang Yin's neck. Song Kanyin looked at this sword and exclaimed in surprise, This is a divine weapon. Can you find a suitable buyer for Cheng? This is a good thing. Song Kanyin smiled and asked, How much silver do you want to sell? How about twenty tails? Song Kanyin pondered, If only Song. How much can be sold is up to you. Cheng Shiji smiled faintly and said, Even if it's one hundred tails of silver per handle, the part that comes out is your benefit. How many of these knives does Mr. Cheng have? How much do you need, how much can I get, but it will take time? Song Kang Yin nodded. He took advantage of Cheng Shiji's lack of attention and launched the technique of looking for Qi however, a dazzling white light suddenly appeared, and Song Kang Yin shouted, Ah! Puff! Song Kang Yin fell to the ground. Cheng Shiji was stunned and said, What's going on? Boss, perhaps this broker has never seen the world before. The boss promised him such a great benefit, and he was overjoyed. Cheng Shiji approached and sniffed Song Kanyin's breath. He was really afraid that Song Kanyin would die. If the three major military commanders of Das Han, and the most crucial one, died, would Li Zicheng still have a chance to establish Das Han? Fortunately, Song Kanyin was still breathing. Qing Shiji pointed to Song Kanyin and said, Mingyu, please take him to your bed. Why did it get onto my bed? Can you get it onto my bed? Okay. Shen Mingyu grabbed Song Kanyin with both hands and placed him on his bed. He then went out to ask his assistant to help find a doctor. 
Shen Mingyu was also worried about his whereabouts, and Yang Yunyang had poisoned Qing Shiji. Yang Yunyang has been searching for opportunities to be alone with Qing Shiji. However, she ignored Qing Shiji's original intention. Qing Shiji's biggest motivation in the late Ming dynasty was to earn money, to earn money that could save his daughter's life. At this moment, Qing Shiji thought that it was inconvenient to travel back and forth in Luji. Just moving supplies from later generations would probably soon arouse suspicion from those with intentions. If there were any options, Qing Shiji would not even want to stay in this gunpowder keg like Dangzhou City. He pondered, if the first transaction could go smoothly, then quickly find a carriage and leave Dangzhou City first. Leaving Dangzhou to go to the capital, at least until the 17th year of the Chongzhen reign, the capital was the safest just as Qing Shiji was daydreaming, Song Kanyin woke up. The first thing he did when he woke up was to take a sample of Cheng Shiji's sword and go out to find a buyer. At this moment, Yang Yunyang also slowly became anxious. Shen Mingyu stood at the door of Cheng Shiji like a tree stump. Every time he wanted to test it, Shen Mingyu's gaze was sharp and fixed on Yang Yunyang, which made Yang Yunyang feel very uncomfortable. A good weapon for women is naturally their bodies. Yang Yunyang decided to use her weapon. Yang Yunyang watched as Xia Jiaxin fell asleep and whispered, Shen. Brother Shen. Can you? Yang Yunyang's voice indicated that she was in great pain and also very weak. Shen Mingyu held the Tang Hengdao that Qing Shiji had given him and walked into the East Wing room. Shen Ming pushed open the door and watched as a splash of water spilled on the ground. Yang Yunyang turned her back to her and covered her stomach with both hands. Shen Mingyu walked over and said, What's wrong with you? Yang Yunyang shook her head and said, "Nu." No. I don't know, I drank. Shen Mingyu looked at the table in the room. There was a teapot on the table, a used tea bowl, which had already been poured onto the table. He walked over, looked at the tea bowl, and sniffed it, saying, It's nothing. At this moment, Yang Yunyang's body moved and she immediately closed the door, whispering, Brother Shen, don't. Don't do this. Slave. Shen Mingyu watched as Yang Yunyang tore open her clothes and messed up her hair, but then she spoke in her own voice. Little girl skin. Bitch, otherwise, grandpa would strangle your daughter. This voice carries a fierce and violent aura. Just then, a hurried knocking came from outside the door. Yunyang. Yunyang. This courtyard was originally small, and the wooden room was not soundproof at all. When Yang Yunyang called Shen Mingyu, Qing Shiji actually heard it, and then the sound inside became somewhat unpleasant. Qing Shiji rushed over with a Tang straight sword in hand. Yang Yunyang quickly put on her clothes again and briefly combed her hair with force. Although it appears somewhat normal, careful observation may also feel abnormal. Yang Yunyang opened the door and said, Master. Shen Mingyu thought Yang Yunyang would report directly, but to his surprise, Yang Yunyang said, Master, it was my servant who accidentally knocked over the water basin. Brother Shen came over to help me clean up. Cheng Shiji looked at Shen Mingyu, who wanted to explain something. Cheng Shiji gestured to Shen Mingyu and said, Mingyu, let's come out and talk. Cheng Shiji walked up to the entrance of the East Cross Courtyard and said, Mingyu, aren't you unmarried? Yes. Cheng Shiji looked at Yang Yunyang's room behind him and whispered, What do you think of Yunyang? She. Cheng Shiji knew his own situation and thought he was just a passerby in the late Ming dynasty. Yang Yunyang's experience was indeed somewhat pitiful. There were too many people like him in the Ming dynasty, and he couldn't save them, but it was fate that met them. Why not arrange for Yang Yunyang to follow Shen Mingyu? Although Yang Yunyang is no longer a virgin, Shen Mingyu's conditions are not good either. Getting married is not like that. No matter how good the conditions are, then look for what kind of woman. If Wu Dalong had found an ordinary woman instead of Pan Jinlian, he would not have died. Shen Mingyu quickly shook his head and said, Master, 
no way. A man should marry, a woman should marry. Ching Shiji smiled faintly and said, Yang Yinyang is not bad. Although she has a child and an extra mouth to eat, with your ability, it shouldn't be a problem to support them. Besides, Yang Yinyang is still young and married now. She can have another child next year. If you're worried about Jiusen, I'll leave you some money. Shen Ming said urgently, Master, I feel pretty good alone. Damn it, if you don't have any ideas, what happened just now? Did you treat me blind? Shen Mingyu couldn't help but smile bitterly and said, Master. I. Okay, I don't care about this matter. Cheng Shiji said, but you need to manage your waistband well. Shen Mingyu is now smearing yellow mud into his pants, not feces, but also feces. If Cheng Shiji had asked Song Kangyan, who pretended to be a broker, to sell other things, he really had no way out and didn't know how to handle it, but he really had a way to sell swords. A few days ago, Song Kangyan was telling his fortune on the street when General Gung Zhongming, a member of the Central Army under the governor of Denglai, met him. He had his soldiers stop Song Kangyan and asked him to tell his fortune. Song Kangyan is definitely not that kind of swindler. He is a person with real abilities. Although Gung Zhongming was dressed in plain clothes at the time, he could see that he had a python-like aura on his body. This indicates that the other party was more expensive than a prince. With his words, Gung Zhongming was overjoyed and even rewarded him with ten tails of silver. This is definitely a big move. Song Kangyan once again sought to see Gung Zhongming without any effort. Sir, what can I do for you? Do you need a weapon, sir? Gung Zhongming burst out laughing and said, If you need a few weapons for self.defense, I'll give them to you, General. How about this knife? Gung Zhongming pulled out Tang Jidao. He had seen so many knives in his life, but he had never seen such a good treasure sword before. The blade was as green as a mirror, and with a gentle flick of his finger towards the spine, he let out a clang dragon chant. He couldn't help but exclaim, Good, excellent divine weapon. General, do you need it? Gung Zhongming stroked the industrial artworks of later generations with his hand and murmured, Such a divine weapon, I miss out on Gung's life. I want to apologize, I want as much as you have. This is not an ordinary product. Understood, how many tails of silver do you need? Song Kangyan extended his hand with a gesture of eight. Gung Zhongming looked sore on his face and said, 800 tails of silver. It's too expensive. Cheng Shiji offered 20 tails of silver, and he felt that he was asking for 80 tails. Earning 60 tails of silver per handle was already enough to make him feel uneasy. Unexpectedly, Gung Zhongming defaulted to 800 tails. If it's someone else with less than 800 tails of silver, Song will turn around and leave. Who made Song have a connection with the general? How about 500 tails in one bite? Okay, great, how much do you have? There are four sizes of straight swords, each with two pieces, totaling eight pieces. There are three sizes of goose feather swords, totaling six pieces. There are two types of Han swords, each with six handles. Song Kangyan also knew that rarity is considered precious. Originally, Ching Shiji wanted to sell 20.8 swords, but he was only willing to sell them to Gung Zhongming, with a total of 20 swords and knives. A total of 10,000 tails of silver. Deal. End of this chapter. Chapter 10. Being a person should emphasize integrity. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 10. Being a person should emphasize integrity chapter 009, boss, the food is ready. In fact, before the Ming and Qing dynasties, there were not many cuisines in China, at least the concept of cuisine was different from that of today. To be honest, it's probably only the kind of Wuyang water mat we have now. Because before the emergence of stir-fried dishes, everyone was just cooking, stewing, and grilling. Apart from grilling, most of the dishes were filled with soup. 
After eating Woyang water mats, you will know what they look like. All the dishes cooked by Yang Yunyang are not stir-fried, but come with soup, such as a clear stewed lamb, a clear stewed hen, winter melon vermicelli soup, and lotus root glutinous rice soup. Each dish comes with soup. Yang Yunyang Yi placed it on the table. Mingyu, come and have dinner. Here we go. Shen Mingyu sat on the basin rack outside the kitchen and began washing his hands. Yang Yunyang was somewhat unnatural when Shen Mingyu stared at her. Don't worry, I'm Yen, not a bandit. Yen, she just uses her beauty to deceive people and will never use force. In fact, Yang Yunyang doesn't have much force. If she wants to fight, she can only deliver vegetables. Shen Ming was very stubborn when he stared at Yang Yunyang. When she cooked in the kitchen, she let Yang Yunyang eat every dish first. Although the dishes were not as well cooked as those of Lu Ji's chef, Ching Shiji was also accustomed to living a difficult life, especially when Xiang Hui married him, he cooked dark dishes. After having a child, Ching Shiji needed to travel frequently, and Xiang Huimen's cooking skills gradually improved. Dining in the restaurant of the main house surrounded by three people. Yang Yunyang asked cautiously, Master, that agent hasn't returned yet. No. Those brokers are just bullying wealthy families, but for those who are new to the company, they may not be polite. Yang Yunyang kindly reminded Ching Shiji not to be deceived by Song Kangyin. How could Ching Shiji not know that the helpers on the street are unreliable? That's why he used heavy profits to attract Song Kangyin. This type of weapon, even if it's of high quality, is made of high carbon steel. What he bought were all mid to high end products, and according to the alloy composition in the manual, it was actually made of high manganese steel. Although the cost is not high, it can be sold in the Ming dynasty, definitely more than 20 tails of silver. You should know that the Ming Dynasty standard iron blade knife costs 8 or 9 tails of silver. Even an ordinary kitchen knife in later generations can be considered a divine weapon in the Ming Dynasty. This is the crushing of technology. Cheng Shiji did not dwell too much on this issue, as there are risks involved in doing business. If you are deceived, then be deceived. If Song Kangyin ran away with his two knives, he had no choice, after all, he was a newcomer and didn't have much to follow. However, now Ching Shiji has decided to go outside the city to see if it is possible to travel through the city every time, leaving Ching Shiji with no sense of security inside. Yun Yang I'm planning to leave a sum of money with you, and you'll be responsible for picking and purchasing ingredients yourself. You can show me the detailed account every month. As for the food, there should be meat for each meal, buy more fish, eggs, and meat, and buy four for each meal, no more than six people. Cheng Shiji glanced at Shen Mingyu, who was silent in cooking. This guy was a big-bellied man, and he could eat three portions like Cheng Shiji alone. If there is no meat, eat more rice. Once the food is ready, there's no need to bring it to my room alone. Just shout at me. If you're willing, you can also join us for a meal. How could that be? There are no rules left. Yang Yunyang muttered to herself, Ching Shiji is too careless. Don't you need a confidant to manage the accounts? Although the money for Kai Jin is not much, he can still deduct a considerable amount of money. How much silver does it cost per month? Ching Shiji will definitely not be able to detect it. Besides, it's not a big deal for Ching Shiji to eat meat every day, but Shen Mingyu is just a servant. One stone of rice in Dengzhou only costs four coins of silver, while Chen rice costs three coins. Even if Shen Mingyu eats one liter of polished rice every day, he won't earn three coins a month. However, a chicken costs twenty or thirty coins, which is enough for Shen Mingyu to eat rice for five days. Yang Yunyang was thinking about how to remind Cheng Shiji that daily necessities are expensive. Of course, Ching Shiji knew that eating meat was more expensive than eating rice, and he would spend more money. However, the problem was that he didn't have a confidant yet, 
and he still hoped that Shen Mingyu would work hard for him to make him eat meat every day. With such a boss, it would be difficult for him to find a second one. For the sake of his own job, Shen Mingyu will definitely protect Cheng Shiji. Shen Mingyu did indeed achieve this. There is a fraudster by his side, but Yang Yunyang has not yet taken action. Even if he tells Ching Shiji, Ching Shiji may not believe him, but instead will make Ching Shiji no longer trust him. Just then, someone knocked on the door outside. Ching Shiji remained motionless, and Shen Mingyu naturally stood up and walked towards the door. Slow down, slow down, yes, be careful. Ching Shiji looked towards the entrance and saw Song Kanyin commanding more than ten porters, pushing three large carts into the East Cross Courtyard. Originally, the area of the East Cross Courtyard was not large, and the three large carts almost filled the yard. Ching Shiji put down his chopsticks and said, This is lucky enough to live up to my fate. Song Kanyin was somewhat proud. He exceeded Ching Shiji's task and sold Ching Shiji's sword, which was priced at 20 tails of silver, for 500 tails of silver per handle. The Dongjiang army is very poor and can be said to be a beggar-like army. Mao Wenlong opened the town for eight years and received a total of over 800,000 tails of silver from the imperial court in name, but in reality, he received over 293,000 tails. The Ministry of Revenue and the Ministry of War ate over 500,000 tails of silver and named him Kiaowu. The military personnel in Guaning spend an average of 39 silver coins per day, but the military personnel in Dongjiang spend less than 4 silver coins per day, averaging over a penny. This amount of money is not enough, not to mention food and salt. No matter how poor the Dongjiang army may be, its generals are actually not poor. For example, Gung Zhongming was the military affairs chief of the Dongjiang army as early as the time of Mao Wenlong, responsible for managing the money and food affairs of the Dongjiang army. This position is of high authority and will not be granted to non-confidants. Gung Zhongming was able to fulfill this position mainly because he was the adopted grandson of Mao Wenlong and Mao Qinglu. He, along with Kong Yud and Shang Kishi, were also Mao Wenlong's adopted grandchildren and were given the surname Mao. Kong Yud was called Mao Yongshi, Gung Zhongming was called Mao Yojia, and Shang Kishi was called Mao Yongshi. During Mao Wenlong's era, Gung Zhongming naturally dared not engage in corruption. However, he did not actually need to do so because the Dongjiang army also had a way to earn money. Jian Nu liked to be buried in thick graves, especially during the massacre of Liao Dong where three feet of land were scraped and a lot of wealth was obtained. The Dongjiang army often attacked Jian Nu and confiscated a lot of money. The coastal islands occupied by the Dongjiang army had limited arable land. If there was no money to purchase food, there was no need to fight, and they would have starved to death long ago. Gung Zhongming could also use the Dongjiang army's navy to rob the smuggled cargo ships of the Ming dynasty, making a considerable profit. In Gung Zhongming's view, Yuan Chonghuan's killing of Mao Wenlong was not without a factor of interest charge. The gold lords behind the Donglin party are the Jiangnan officials and gentry group, who control the channels for smuggling from Jiangnan to Korea and Japan, while the Dongjiang army takes advantage of its geographical advantage to get a share of the pie. Although the Dongjiang army is doing it very discreetly, there is no need for evidence for such a thing. A doubt is enough. Gung Zhongming's very urgent problem is that after Huang Long took over as the commander of the Dongjiang army, he kept biting Gung Zhongyu and hoped to use him to open up a gap in the Mao group of the Dongjiang army. He hopes to give this divine weapon to Huang Long, and Huang Long can accept it as soon as it improves. Gung Zhongming didn't actually pay all the silver for Song Kangyin, among which there were 150 pieces of high dot quality silk worth 12 tails of silver. Such silk could be sold to Europa for at least over a hundred tails of silver. In ancient times, cloth and silk could already replace currency, with three large carts carrying 150 pieces of silk and 30 pieces of Songjiang cotton worth 100 tails of silver, followed by silver. Did you sell it? Sold. 
Song Kongyin looked at Cheng Shiji eating and didn't hesitate to sit down. He picked up the chopsticks used by Yang Yunyang, picked up a piece of lamb, and stuffed it into his mouth. Not bad, delicious. Mr. Cheng can give them twenty knives. Amazing. Cheng Shiji opened the cabinet and asked Shen Mingyu to deliver the sword to the car in the yard. With three large carts approaching, a steward appeared, wielding swords and knives to inspect the goods. As Song Kanyan had said, they were all divine weapons and exquisite products. Song Kanyan, holding a chicken leg in one hand, walked up to the steward and said, Now that the money and goods are clear, go back and tell General Gung that I have calculated a fortune for him. Recently, he has a small calamity, and there is not a big problem. Don't worry, don't do anything, naturally you can get through it. Thank you very much, sir. The steward placed his sword on the cart, then had someone unload the cloth and silver and leave directly. Ching Shiji looked at four large boxes and said, Twenty knives, how much did you sell for? Ten thousand tails. Song Kangyan looked at Ching Shiji with a smile on his face and said, Do you still take what Mr. Cheng said before seriously? Ching Shiji was priced at twenty tails, but Song Kangyan sold five hundred tails directly, exceeding four hundred and eighty tails of silver. Now that the delivery has been completed, Song Kangyan also wants to see how Ching Shiji, who he cannot see through, can make a decision. Although Ching Shiji was not a businessman in later generations and knew the value of goods, he had a direct relationship with his network. By chance, he came across the logistics bill of Han Steel Group. Han Steel Group used white gloves for its employees, which cost less than one yuan per pair on average at a certain treasure. However, the purchasing department of Han Steel Group charged a unit price of 15 yuan. Han Steel Group needs to spend hundreds of thousands of pairs of white gloves every month, and the purchase price will only be cheaper. However, in fact, it has increased by 15 or 16 times. The most profitable ones are actually not manufacturers, but secondary dealers. Cheng Shiji's uncle, Xiang Ji, grows watermelons at a price of only 20 cents per kilogram. However, when Cheng Shiji buys watermelons at the supermarket, he never pays less than one yuan. Whether it's vegetables or meat, the money earned by farmers and herdsmen is only a small fraction, and a larger portion is taken away by second-tier traders. Because they control channels and networks, which is the most valuable resource. After just thinking for a moment, Ching Shiji smiled faintly and said, As a person, only four hundred tales of integrity belong to Cheng, and the rest belongs to Mr. Song. P.S. It's actually in single-player mode now. Old Cheng is feeling anxious, asking for tickets and support. End of this chapter